Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. Sorry. First of all, sorry we had a short delay, two, three minutes of delay due to me walking with my dog for too long. But don't worry, we are here. We are here with full focus, full attention to you and the amazing tournament we will have in front of us. Five more Sundays, six in total. Multiple teams, multiple games, a lot of interesting things that are going to happen and I cannot wait. So, ICB as well, we have you here. Thank you very much. Yeah, great to be here. It's going to be really fun today. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Guys, so first short introduction to the ARI tournament. If you don't know, ARI tournament, the name is coming from one of the best, if not the best, actually, yeah, hell yeah, the best German content creator I personally know from the Conquest of Blade, and his name is Ari Toshima. He came up with idea to create this, this community tournament for all the players to play in and compete for all the teams to also, you know, enjoy for all your view, right? For all the viewers to enjoy it. So basically from players to players, we are all playing Conqueror Blade as well. So we know what we are talking about. In February was the first edition. This was only one day, but quite a long day, let me tell you. Right now we have moved far, far, far away from that. We have made a lot of improvements and I hope you will see all of them today. So one of the improvements, and I think the key ones, is we have someone on the other part of the screen. We have CB. Hi, CB. You will be the co-caster for today. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I'm streaming live from the Netherlands, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a Dutch player, a person. Um, I started in uh, Season 4, late Season 4, playing Conquest Blade during the first quarantine of COVID, of course. Um, I diehard rushed the game, absolutely loved every second of it. Um, I'm at level 600 right now, I think. I um, also played a lot of rank, and for my house on EU2, I'm the field commander as well. So I think uh, I know enough to have uh, a lot of good conversations with you, with you about the game, and also help get a better understanding of what's going on when, when we watch the battles. Cool. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Cool, amazing. Glad to have you here. And guys, remember, this is... I'm not the full professional streamer, so if you will have any suggestions, like the volume of CB might be too low or something like that, let me know immediately on chat. I will be reading through the chat constantly. At least I will try my best to do so. Uh, in the meantime, thank you, Rhapsody, for the ride. Welcome, everyone, coming in. Um, yeah, so uh, if you don't know me, then I mean... Ooh, big oof for you, but in short, my name is General Combo. I, I am the content creator for, for my games. I'm Polish, so sorry for my English. Sometimes it can be a bit wonky, but I'll try my best. And yeah, I play on EU2. I'm actually, I'm like 20 levels away from level 2000. So I consider myself quite experienced player as well. I play since the start of, season, uh, of uh, the server, pretty much, of EU2 server. So almost two years right now. And uh, yeah, have seen a lot and uh, we'll see even more today on the tournament. So we have um, for the first match, I need to set a timer. Give me a moment because yeah, I forgot. Uh, by the way, sorry for all my issues and mistakes. I am a bit ill and yeah, I don't feel that great, but anything for you guys. I have set up timer right now. It started the countdown. Yes. So we will talk about the first match in 23 minutes in details and you will know a lot of details we have prepared so can't wait for that but before we do so let's quickly jump to the standings and let's see what is going to happen in the group a so in the group a we have three teams over here so the teams are the teams are arrogant ravens we have nexus and we also have eclaridus cb what do you know about them yeah, we know a lot about those teams, especially uh, Arrogant Ravens, who are also known as DTI and Eclorites. They played in two tournaments before, uh, the core tournament as well as, of course, of course, the Ari tournament, the first one. Um, they both had a really hard time on the first tournament. Uh, they lost to Eden and, and Gegner, respectively. And then in the other tournament, the core tournament, they also lost in the first round and then were paired up against each other. And they both won and lost a single game to each other. So this is going to be really exciting between the two of them to see um, who, is, who, who might be going out of the group, right? Um, and then we have Nexus. Uh, they are a new, t new team to the tournament scene for us. 
Uh, we know they are veteran players. Um, they have a lot of high level players. They don't even want to say how high because it's so extremely high level. Um, so hopefully we will find out if they are also a great team. Um, but they are a little bit a dark horse for us. And yeah, I'm really curious to see what they can do in this group. But absolutely a very exciting group for, for us today. Yeah. Cool. And we will talk much more in detail before each matchup about the team, so you will get to know them much better across the whole day. For now, let's jump a little bit back to the tournament itself and let's talk about all the rules and everything you need to know. So, uh, also let me tell you that you can uh, use the commands exclamation mark help. If you write it on chat, the bot will private message you with, uh, with the commands you can use. And over there, we'll right now talk, of course, all about the rules, maps, everything. Uh, the schedules and so on, but the bot will help you to see where you can find more information if uh, uh, for some reason, I don't know, you will have to step out for a moment or, or whatever. You will not miss anything, don't worry. There will be a lot of uh, information coming after as well, the stream, so rest streams and, and stuff like that. But exclamation mark help, you can check all the rules and everything anytime you wish. So let's start with the general ARI tournament idea. So as I said earlier, ARI tournament one was only one day. It was about seven or eight hours. So it was quite hardcore, a lot of games, a lot of emotions, and it was very exhausting for casters, for teams, and also for some of the viewers. So right now we decided to basically split it into the chunks. And those chunks you can right now see on the screen. We have four groups from A to D, and they will be playing on separate Sundays. So right now, today we have group A, then 25th April group B, on 2nd of May we have group C, and 9th of May we have group D. After that, we will go to quarterfinals, and the last but not least, I, I guess it's actually the most important one, right? So we have semifinals and finals. All of this information as said, you can check on the ARI tournament Discord, but that's generally how it will go through. We have 12 teams in total and they will be divided in those groups. But we will talk about them more in detail in a moment, how it will work. Before we go into the details on the, on the matches and, and stuff like that, let me quickly remind you about the betting that is currently going on. So you can uh, run exclamation mark bet command, as you can see on the screen, uh, basically on chat, right? And then the bot will PM you back with the, all the message, all the information you need to know about betting. You can enter for free. Anyone can enter, don't worry. Um, but the betting will close in 18 minutes. So basically, when we will, when the counter in the bottom right goes to zero, I will close the betting. And what we are betting for today, we are betting for which team will get the first seed, the first place in the group. So that's what you are betting for. Then everyone who provided correctly at the end of the stream, I will make a lottery of all the correct predictors and we will have a winner. What you can win? That's a good question. Uh, well, let's see. You can win the prizes as such. So today we are fighting for 20 XP cards. I mean, it's not much, but uh, then also for newer players, it can be quite a lot. Remember that they give a lot of uh, additional XP boost, and this is important, right? You need to level up your units. Currently, uh, on the tournament server, fortunately, everyone has maxed out units, so they don't need to level them up. So we will see the, the very good, uh, very good thing going on, but uh, that's the prizes. Also, if you run exclamation mark bet command on chat, you will be able to see all the prizes there as well. So join, please join the, the betting and uh, exclamation mark bet for an information. So that's all of the general information. Right now, let's jump into the rules of the matches. So TB, would you like to tell us a little bit more about this? Absolutely, absolutely. We got a really interesting format, I think. Um, it's very similar to the army tournament that was played already. Um, so some of you might recognize these rules and uh, feel like they worked really well last time. We got really positive feedback on these, um, especially the first one where uh, we only will play with the gray, blue, and purple and green units. And it's mean, this means no T5 units. 
So all the popular units that you see often in siege or field battles, like Pavise, Falconetti, Wing to Zara, Leo Rangers, they will not be available, as well as the Shield Maidens. Uh, but we will have Berserkers. So definitely, definitely look out for those. Teams are really excited to play those in this tournament as well. Um, then we also have the Rule 2, which is very popular for teams uh, during the last tournament. Um, we will not be using additional artillery. So teams can be, can be using the artillery that is already on the maps, right? So if there's artillery on the walls or on the, or on the ground, teams can use those, but they cannot build additional artillery. So this means they will really have to focus on playing together as a team with their units, um, and not gain advantages by building a lot of artillery in one place. We will also not have additional doctrines. They will be disabled as well as runes. We will also not have runes for the teams and players available um, today and for the next couple of weeks. So it will be bare units up to till T4, and um, we'll see how good the teams are individually and as a team as a whole. And then we have the fourth rule, and in general, I know you and I, we die a lot in siege battles quite often, especially if we are fatigued or are having a hard time. Um, but our players for this tournament only have three lives each. If they die more than three times, or they die three times, they are out of the game, they cannot come back. And we've seen in some of the tournaments how this really can impact the game. If a pl player dies three times and they still have 100 or 200 units left in their barracks, um, and suddenly their team is out a player. It makes a great, great disadvantage advantage for your team if you die too many times. So this is going to impact the game quite a bit in some. Um, you, of course, have to play risky sometimes, but you also have to make sure you stay alive. Um, so let's hope uh, our professional teams can do that today. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so in the meantime, I see on the chat, can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, let's get into the correct mood. Where is Dogo? Dogo is actually eating lunch right now. Uh, let's do fighting style, maybe, right? Sorry? Let's do fighting style if we can. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> for today, boys. Yeah, really season really seven really hype. Really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, hey Portal Glass, yeah, best greetings for a Joker. Yeah, we just met with those guys on the with my dog on the on the walk. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, thank you very much for the follows. I Platinum, TDD House, welcome as well. And big shout out, yeah, to TB from TDD House, great. Okay, guys, let's go into the next uh, screen and let me tell you a little bit about the group phase. So, as said earlier, group phase will have 12 teams divided in four groups. In each group, there will be at least six games, right? So right now we have three teams, six games. So as you can calculate, each team is playing two, um, two times, uh, like two, op two opponents, right? Two matchups, you could say. So these two matchups will consist of two attack and two defense games. So this is actually quite different from the previous tournament. We wanted to um, make it, uh, you know, more even for the teams, right? So they can also try themselves both in attack and defense against each other. Therefore, each team facing other team, so one matchup, right? One time they will be on attack, one time they will be on defense. So basically, that's how we wanted to make it even. So, you know, if you are better, then you need to prove it on both ends of the wall in the game. So we will see how it goes. And I said minimum six games, because if there will be any tiebreakers required, so if uh, they can be two-way uh, two way tie, so we will not know who is the first place or second place, or they can be three-way tie, where all the teams can have exactly the same amount of wins. Then what we will do is we will have the field battles played between the teams as a tie breaker. And those will be done after the initial six games. So I will tell you a little bit more. In a moment, we will show you the whole schedule for today, and then we can talk more in details what will happen throughout the day. But for now, let's jump in to what will happen after the group phase. Because after the group phase, we have... Yes, the finals, of course. This is where the best teams battle it out, right? Um, we got to dump one team in a group phase, and we know it's going to be the worst team of the group. So let's look forward to the final brackets. It's going to be eight teams remaining. Um, we will have best of threes only. Um, there will be four quarterfinal quarter matches on the first Sunday. And then the semi-final, the third place uh, decider, and the final itself will be played on the second Sunday on the 23rd of May. 
um, all best of trees once again. Um, and on the best of trees, there will be randomly chosen which team uh, will get the attack first, and then we will follow up with defense and attack for one team, and the other will have the opposite, of course. So, um, yeah, it's going to be action packed uh, games on these final two weeks, absolutely. Definitely, definitely, and I cannot wait for that. So the last thing I guess to discuss is uh, the maps. So what maps will we play on? Basically, we have chosen five maps to be available for the tournament. And out of these five maps, you can see two are crossed. Dasuo Fort and Bali Fortress are crossed out. This is because we wanted to make it... Uh, interesting uh, for the viewers so have more than one map this time but also interesting for the teams to prepare on several maps but not on too many right i mean after all you know, people have uh, other things to do right so they, they shouldn't prepare for 20 maps so that's why we wanted to limit it out and what we did also is uh, one week ago before the tournament started to order the team leaders we have provided the list of the maps and each one of them were able to provide some ban votes for the maps. We have summarized all of these, um, all of these ban votes and we ended up with the results like that. Like that. So basically, Dasuo Fort and Valley Fortress was the, the most banned maps out of the, out of the, all the team leaders. Uh, give me one minute. And I see there's a question in the chat uh, from Platinum Sulisuleri. So he's wondering if the rules um, also allow in-game points involved in draw decisions. So any tiebreakers or any draws that we end up in a group phase will be decided by the tiebreaker through a field battle, right? So we will not be having any units or timers in, like involve what team gets out. It will be decided on during the battle. Definitely. No. Thanks for answering that. Yeah, so coming back to maps, uh, basically Walford, Kura Castle and Harbor City will be available throughout the all group stages. So today and in the next three uh, Sundays, you can see one of these three maps and how the maps will be chosen. Basically, we will go in a moment to, um, to our German casters and over there we will do the lottery of the map for the first match. So between the first matchup, we will do a map lottery. And then the teams will fight two times on this map, right? Once times on defense and one time on attack. Each team will fight on the same exact map. So this is something that we are going to do in a moment. Before we go there, let me see if we are ready. I know we are. Ah, okay, yeah. I see uh, we, ha we are ready uh, yeah. to go with the map. So let's uh, go and agree our new, uh, our uh, sorry, new, new guys, right, from the German cast. Uh, so what we need to do is, for a moment, we need to say goodbye to a CB um, because it will not be unfortunately available, and we need to share it. So, oh, CB, I will be back with you in a moment. We need to choose the. Yeah, see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Darauf Hi. Also wieder umzudenken, quasi, dass man das nicht einfach so machen kann, ist, glaube ich, auch eine große Hürde, würde ich mir fast schon behaupten. Oder Hello. wie siehst du das? Ich sehe das genauso wie du. Also, das Sustain, den man verliert, auch durch die minus 5% Damage-Rune oder. Die Waffenverzauberung, die man normalerweise drauf hat, so ein Longbow <lacht> ohne guten Stats auf der Waffe, ist oft genug selbst versucht. Es ist richtig hart, du musst jeden Pfeil treffen, ansonsten bist du einfach gesehen relativ useless. Also, in halt sehr viele Stats. Ich habe jetzt zum Beispiel. Okay, so it seems that they are finishing some discussions, so uh, I will mute uh, for a moment. I need to modify this because it broke. Reason. Okay. Okay. 
uh, yeah so sorry for that i mean this is the first day we are doing stuff like that so uh, still some things need to be tested and uh, perfected let's say it like that and this is uh, this is why we are doing some stuff like like that but then yeah we are ready fully lass mir das darüber entscheiden Okay. Uh, Combo, you ready? Yeah, uh, I guess we are ready to with the wheel. Let me change the scene. Yep. Okay, perfect. Then let's decide which map will be played. And it will be Walford. Okay. So the first two matches, um, I hope CB told you already um, that we will Arrogant Ravens and Eclaritas played two times mm -hmm. so that they can get their IDs fixed. Yep. And then. We will have two matches now on Walford. Also jetzt nochmal in Deutsch. Ja, wir haben zwei okay. Matches jetzt auf dem Thanks. Walford and um, Combo. Mm -hmm. See you later. Yep. See you. Enjoy. Bye bye. All right. So we are back in business. As you have seen, we have chosen the Walford to be first. Okay. Which one thing? Give me a moment so that we will be able to see CD once again. It should. So. Okay, so we have still a few minutes before the match would start. And uh, yeah, so CD. Yeah. Let's jump in a little bit to the discussion on the themes for today in general. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we will be playing on, Wal on Walford map, right? It's been confirmed just now. Um, this is already pretty interesting. Uh, we haven't seen this map in uh, any of the tournaments up till now, I think. Uh, uh, I think it has been played maybe yesterday on another tournament, but we haven't seen it too, too much. And uh, we know these teams haven't played on this map, so we will definitely see uh, some new strategies being used uh, by all teams because we haven't seen them on, on this map. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm curious curious about those things. Um, I look forward to see what the, what they bring to the map. Um, we know that uh, arrogant ravens uh, like to throw in some surprises for us. They uh, try to destroy towers with, with uh, red and marksmen, and we've also seen Eclorites uh, use uh, quite a few javelins. Um, so both teams like to mix it up, and again, Nexus is going to be a dark horse. We don't know what they play, we don't know what they bring. Um, so we'll have to find out and, and wait for, for, the, for the game to start as well, as well. Yep, and as we have heard, there are some issues, technical issues for one of the team. So uh, right now what I'm uh, showing is the schedule. Yeah, so, so Nexus is having uh, issues getting into the tournament server, right? Um, mm -hmm. They are trying to fix that now. Uh, we hope uh, that they get it fixed within an hour or so. And it, this means that we will move up uh, Eclorites and Arrogant Ravens to the first two games in the schedule. So they will play back-to-back -back into each other. And then Nexus uh, will follow up with hopefully their whole team on the tournament server as well. Mm -hmm. So in general, uh, the, the, I think the, the whole uh, schedule is quite simple. We will start every full half hour to do so, right? So basically, in three minutes, we will start the discussion about the first game. Uh, then every next half an hour, we will start the next game. Unfortunately, the Nexus team, as, as they have issues, they will be moved to later. So first, we will see Eclarides versus Arrogant Ravens and two games of that. One side each. Absolutely. So, like I said before, right? The uh, Eclorites versus Arrogant Ravens is a uh, is, is should be a very exciting match uh, for us. Um, we know they are equally equally matched uh, at least before this tournament. So they they've also played each other twice. Um, so they know a little bit what they uh, what their opponent can do. Um, We've seen especially Eclorites make uh, quite a few big improvements over the tournaments that they played. They started out as a really rookie team with young players, new players. They start, started on EU4, 
so that's a relative new server, relative new players as well. Um, they had the quickest lost, loss in all of the tournaments that we've seen. So they've come from a really far, far place um, to actually getting wins, right? In the, in the last few games that they played, um, they got a few players that have been performing really well consistently as well. And the same could be said about the Aaron and Ravens. We've seen them um, do really well against even the top teams. Like they never get stomped very hard, but they always like manage to def defend or attack quite well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm waiting for the final confirmation from the backstage, but uh, seems like the Eclarides will be the first one to attack. All right. So Eclarides, they they've actually um, had to defend quite a bit in most of their matches. Um, the win that they got, I think, actually was check. I think it was in defense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they won in defense once. Um, so yeah, gonna be interesting. Acrolytes, of course, uh, won the attack then because it was first for versus Acrolytes uh, that Arrogant Ravens played. Um, so um, we're gonna have a, a good match on the on the start and uh, well, after the first they will have to change, of course. So we'll see both teams uh, on the attack and the defense then. Yep. And guys, uh, just a short reminder, there is six minutes left, around six minutes till the first match starts. So exclamation bet, bet, you can join the betting tournament. So far, there is very small amount of entries. So if you join, you have very big chance to win. What you need to do is just uh, provide basically your Twitch name, your, your in-game name, and then you need to vote for who do you believe will take the first place on a group. So Quite simple prediction. Okay, so as we are moving into the game itself, let's focus fully on the teams and let's focus on what's going to happen now. So we have Eclarides versus Arrogant Ravens. Eclarides team attacking, Arrogant Ravens will be defending first. The second match they will switch, but for now it's like that. So let me tell you a little bit more in detail about the teams. Arrogant Ravens, they are coming from EU West 2 team. Eclarides, they initially were EU 4, but after the servers were combined, they are right now also on EU 2. So we have a EU 2 matchup. Arrogant Ravens are mainly Turkish, pretty much all of them are Turkish, and they are coming from the Bushido house. The Eclarides are French, and they are coming from Aurora Polaris the uh, Aurora Polaris house. They play quite a long, uh, quite long time. Arrogant Ravers basically since season three, Eclarides around six to eight months in game. So let's say approximately similar amount of, uh, of time spent in game. And they are, they, their statements from both teams is that they are quite experienced in territory wars, in playing together, and they have some previous tournament experience as well so definitely it will be a good matchup to see um one highlight i can give you more is that uh, for the biggest territory war achievement for arrogant ravens they have been attacking the capital cities for already quite a few seasons and they were usually very close to defeat them right so they usually came very close but uh, but you know just a slightly small thing was missing i guess but we will see if right now, today, they will be able to cover all the gaps. For the Eclarides, their main achievement is that one time they had 14 cities, 3 forts and 39 villages. So if I can count correctly really fast, they had over 55 pips at one time. That's quite an outstanding, even for an alliance, that's quite an outstanding achievement. And right now, TB, what else can you tell them? Yeah, so for... For Argon Ravens, um, we know that uh, their players are, uh, yeah, like you said, experienced. They are aged uh, age between 16 and 30, um, so they have a uh, few young players, but on average they are, they are you could say, quite young. We, we have a lot of teams with players well over 30. Um, they also said that any of them could be MVP, which is interesting. We see in most teams that they have a few players that really stand out above the rest, but they feel like they are all equal to each other. 
So you might say they are, they are an elite team. Hopefully they are. We'll see on the battlefield, of course. Um, and yeah, they, they like, like to uh, see a few of them fall using traps on themselves as well. Um, so they pride themselves on uh, suicide trapping. Um, so I hope we can see a few of those tactics used uh, in this uh, game as well, because like we said, uh, a death really counts in this because you only have three. So um, yeah, I'm really curious if they still want to trebuchet themselves. Um, but let's let's see if they if they do it during the games. Um, in the games that they played, we've seen um, especially Gangfang, Apocalyptica, Siberia, and Carmox play really well. They they were the MVP players of all the games that they played. So they did have different MVPs each game. Um, yeah, so they seem to be a well-rounded team, well balanced on all sides of their players. So yeah, it's 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 a good team overall, and most what I've seen. Um, if we're looking at uh, Acolytes, uh, they are a different team for sure. And like I said, they are more of a rookie team. They've had to adjust to the tournament scene, where it's it's a little different, probably compared to the TWs that they played before. Uh, we've seen them really like going through the games uh, as a as a 15 man squad quite often. So they have uh, they, and, and they also had a hard time defending against flanks. So they were surprised quite often. And if we look at their MVPs, we see especially Matt Shin has been like raking up a lot of those. Um, he's also in a game today. And the other MVP player they have is uh, Bat Batman, not the one from the movies, but a real Batman probably. Um, and he is not here today for their for their team. So they are missing one of their major MVP candidates. So I wonder how much this is going to affect uh, the team today. But one of the MVPs, Matt Shin, he is here. Watch out for the player. Same for Belanda, he's also got the MVP ones. Um, those are two players to look out for during the match. All right. Thank you for, for this additional input. So definitely, guys, as you heard, there is a lot of interesting players to watch. There is a lot of interesting things that are going to happen today. I personally can't wait to see. So uh, we still are waiting for the for the match to load up since like there are some 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 issues so we will take a bit more time let me extend the timer let's say a few, a few more minutes we will be able to resolve it in that time and, uh, yeah so uh, cb how's your opinion on season seven so far in terms of you needs the rooms you know all the new stuff yeah i i, I think the units are really fun like extremely fun actually. Uh, last season of course we had two CAF units, right? Um, they are fun to use, but I think that most players prefer to have infantry actually. Um, it's, a middle, it's a little more easier to play with those. And um, yeah, the, the Berserker and the Sons of Fenry are really quick. Uh, it's, it's, it's so fun to use them, right? Um, they just rush in wherever they want and they destroy everything in the path, especially the Berserkers. We've seen players getting 7, 9, 10 kills. It's, they are so so good once they get going, and you really gotta make sure you stop those uh, in the tracks. And we of course won't be seeing the shield maidens. We we got that to test them out a little bit, and they too are so fun to play with. Yeah, so I'm I'm loving this season, right? And um, what do you think about the rune system? Because I know a lot of people like that really enjoy the rune system. Yeah, uh, I personally love the rune system. To be honest, it gives you so much additional flexibility to highlight your play style. I play uh, as a spear main. I also have like two or three more more uh, heroes I use, like weapons, but I, I, I main the spear. And the amount of uh, additional builds you can switch around and, uh, you know, you can, you can modify your runes very easily and you know play with uh, this or that or be more defensive or be more offensive you can focus on caps you can focus on killing units you can get uh, great um, great results when you when you kill heroes and and things like that all these rewards are very 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 fun to have experiment with play around and you know adjust to your game style right uh the the, the one top room i personally have would be the one where uh, it uh, increases your damage on the spear by 30% with the slide skill. 
but most importantly, it extends the range of the slide skill. Uh, when you when you do the ground slide, I forgot the name. Actually, I can, <laughs> I'm in game right now. I can check. But basically, it extends your range of slide by 100%. Just makes it that you can slide twice as far away as possible. The name of the skill is Gangir's Greeting, and yeah. this for me allows to be much more flexible in a gameplay, um, in you know dire situations when someone is running. With low HP, you kick the spear to him, and he's still not dead. You can, you know, come to him with that skill. If you are low HP, you can use it to run away, right? So this gives a lot of new possibilities. One run, so many different possibilities. Yeah, this absolutely. is something that's that's nice for me. Yeah, it's really nice. Huh? What uh, would be especially the... like you said, uh, I also played spear uh, a little bit. Once I got uh, a bit bored with glaive, I'm a, I'm a glaive main now. I used to play with longsword. Um, I really love those classes. I like to be a little more tanky because I get myself into sit situations I pro probably sh shouldn't be in, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I really like to get damage reduction once I am below 30% health, um, just to be a little bit, more, little bit more tanky after my initial engage and still be able to get out. But like you said, with the runes, some abilities that we have not seen played uh, quite, a, quite a bit actually got better, right? Like Gunnar's Greeting, I think almost no one played it uh, with Spear, and it's, it's really good to find out now that with, with a rune you can actually make it useful and, and use it in your playstyle if, if it suits you. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, it. that's pretty cool about this system. Okay, and if you would have to pick only one rune, like the best rune you have, you like? The best rune? Like for sieges, it's gotta be the bandage healing, right? I think, um, I, at least for me, I mean, I run into Namcan so often with my horse on my glaive, spinning around, right? Trying to kill all of them, but they always manage to get like 15 bleed stacks on me and you just pop heal and it's bad. It, it's gone. That, that's so amazing for me. Um, so I think that that's like the, a big game changer for me personally, at least. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Namkans are, can be the pain in us, definitely. But uh, yeah, it's, you see, this, this short discussion, it, it already gives me a great um, feeling about the, the, the rune system, right? Because you like this, I like this. And you tell that, and I immediately think myself, well, I don't use it. Like, I watch out for Namkans. I have like a Namkan mm -hmm. radar, radar when they are nearby. Yeah. I just don't go there, right? And this is my playstyle. I just don't go near them and don't get bleed and don't use this room. But you play differently, use it. And this is something that I think it's un unwritten in any, you know, tutorial or anything like that. You need to experience it yourself. Try around, play around, test out many different things. And then you can come up with many different conclusions talk with others, compare, see how is it going. And uh, yeah, this is definitely, definitely that's, that's what I like the, the rune systems the most. Yeah, very good, very good. Something else I really like is uh, that some of the runes are so good in uh, more of territorial war, right? Uh, I think most, most people actually play in those, or, and if you haven't, you, you definitely should. It's so much fun to play with a house, with a big team, try and get the city of your own, right? Or even a small village. Um, and some of the runes allow you to, once you die, you heal or you damage buff all the teammates around you. So if you are 10 men stacked, it's so good, right? It's, it's so juicy to get all those heals or all that damage back into, into your team. Um, yeah, it's, it's so much better then. But as you just, you know, quite often you're on your own or only with two or three people maybe, and then it's, it's less effective, of course. You don't really see the effect of that rune. But in territorial wars, it's it's also different strategies. Like you like you say, you can tweak around and use what works for your team the best. Yep, definitely. So a lot of things to to try out. And about the units, we have right now on live servers on the two units available from the new season: the Berserkers and the Sons of Fenrir. Mm -hmm. Did you had any experience using them? Yeah, I played with the Sons of Fenrir in the start. Um, didn't like them at first, um, but then I saw this clip where someone actually like x them forward, used the sprint, uh, two Pavice actually, and charged the Pavice and they just wrecked those uh, units. So I think they definitely have potential, but 
they feel a bit squishy sometimes. You really gotta use their speed. That's probably their advantage. But it's it's hard to use quite often. The berserkers are a whole different story. They are just absolutely absolute beast modes. Um, they they are so good. Um, I played them a little bit with my uh, like three day uh, experimental stuff. Um, didn't unlock them fully because I still try to get season three units. Um, they are so good as well. The berserkers, yeah, they they just wreck through everything. Yeah, absolutely great unit. Um, I'm really looking forward to today as well, right? To see if uh, teams will actually use uh, the Berserkers. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can be really good. Um, but they can also be stopped quite easily sometimes. Like we've seen a lot of uh, teams um, play Musket, and Muskets can almost one shot Berserkers. Mm -hmm. So if you're not careful, you will lose uh, all of your Berserkers before they even get somewhere. So, um, yeah. But I think it's, they're very interesting units. Once again, they, they might change the meta a little bit. And we've seen in all the tournaments that there's a lot of stalwarts, of course, and Pyro Pikes for Tabarcha, right? Yeah, those are the main units. Berserkers work fine against stalwarts. Yep, well, absolutely. Like short um, yeah, yeah, they're really good. And, and, and they heal, which is a great ability, right? They heal for so much damage that they take. I don't know. Have you, have you played them and like got an uh, almost death berserker, death berserker back to full health? Uh, not the full squad, but some of the soldiers, yes, they were able to, thanks mm -hmm. to that healing, they were able to withstand much longer than they should. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, the, <laughs> but they did, right? Yeah. That, that's so cool to see, yeah. And frustrating on the other side, if you are like, oh, he's almost dead, and then back to full health or close to full health, and yeah, you're just out of the game. Then. Yep. All right, guys, so... If you are not sure why we are just talking and not playing, uh, <laughs> short uh, short reminder: the one of the teams had unfortunately some technical issues with the server access, and they are working on that. And in the meantime, we have had to change the schedule a little bit around so that the teams that uh, have the issues would play later in the day today. So right now we are waiting for the other team to connect. Basically, they should be starting later. They need to connect earlier, so they are you know. There are some things happening in the background that will allow us to stream you the game as soon as possible. Right now I have put like around eight minutes. I think, I hope it will be faster, but I cannot guarantee it to you, unfortunately. Uh, one of the teams is already fully on the server. We are still waiting for another one. So there will be some time. Who is playing first? Albino is asking. <clears throat> first matchup, we'll have two games of Eclarides versus Arrogant Ravens. So. Aclarides will be on attacking side and Arrogant Ravens will be on the defending side. After the match is finished, they will switch. So, uh, so after that, they will switch. Um, and, and then we will progress with, with other teams in, in Group A. So, uh, so we are still waiting for the teams. In the meantime, actually, if you are coming just a moment ago to the stream and maybe you don't know, exclamation mark bet. I said, and I still stand by it. Until the first game starts, you can enter the betting tournament, or not the tournament, the betting competition where you are able to, for free, basically go and predict which team you think, out of three teams who are playing today, which team will be coming out as first place out of the group. So what you can win today is uh, some, some nice consumables, some XP boosts. So uh, definitely a uh, thing to check and to, to go, especially that it's, it's for free. I mean, so why not? You can only gain stuff. You can only gain stuff, definitely. Right now, basically, you can enter exclamation mark bet. The bot um, will tell you on PM, the stream elements bot will PM you the information you need to know where to sign up. You just go to Google form and, and, uh, and sign up pretty much. And then after uh, when the game starts, I will close the entries. After the whole tournament, I will make a lottery of all the people who predicted correctly, and then you can win some. So, uh, 
Uh, that's pretty much it. Exclamation mark bet if you want to join. I see Zuki already hopped in on the train. Nice. And we have a question from Lol Broek. Do I think there will be a lot of Armingers since they are the meta cap units as political cap? Um, Lol Broek, you can check the uh, you can check the uh, replays from the previous tournament where they were used uh, in different scenarios and different tactics. Some of the teams heavily relied on them and did like a cavalry rush outside the gate. So uh, no one expected that, I guess, but they used a lot of arming as to do it. Other teams, on the other hand, had only like three or four units of them, and they use it very strategy, strategically, very tactically, you know, to just right to the point, to pinpoint selected area of map, to close it out, to not allow to be flanked, to cover their sides. You know, many different tactical uses of the armingers were visible because you need to remember that um, tournament server is something totally different. All the tournaments are something totally different in the terms terms of gameplay from standard sieges, even from territory war, because you cannot use artillery. You don't have tier five units, right? You are playing uh, in territory war. You are sometimes you know fighting. Uh, uh, cohorts which cannot be which can be not so organized or sometimes you you know fight against uh, uh, houses which are just you know more new to the game uh, while here we have the creme de la creme, creme de la creme right the most experienced uh, guys from given houses and the houses that are represented in the tournament are quite good houses with quite a lot of achievements behind their back and uh, yeah they can yeah, we will see a lot of different things here. And we've also seen that um, CAF in tournaments is not always as effective as you expect it to be. Um, if you go full CAF, uh, these teams know full, totally how to counter it, right? They will set up the, their walls in time, they will fan out and have all their flanks covered. So it's not so easy to just rush in with CAF um, against these teams. They know how it plays, they know how to play against it. So they are well prepared. And we've also seen, um, especially Pond Guard, which is a team we will see later on from NA. They love, they love their CAF, they totally do. They always have a full CAF lineup most of the time in their, uh, in their unit selection. And we see that sometimes they do not have the inf infantry units anymore left to actually attack uh, a capture point on the wall because they only have CAF. So all they can do is run around on the, on the ground and they cannot get anywhere up. So um, yeah, playing CAF is it's, it's still good, but you need, like you said, you need to be careful about how you use it. You need to they need to flank really well to to be effective. And it's a bit a bit harder for uh, these teams because they're they are really good. Mm -hmm. um, I see on the chat uh, Ghost Gamer. Yeah, the, when when Eden right out again out of the gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see we have some experienced viewers. Glad to have you here. Yeah, yeah, that, that was very, very nice action, quite hardcore. Uh, Brises, you wrote bet, uh, bet Eden. To bet, you need to just write exclamation mark bet. That's all, nothing else. Exclamation mark bet, and then the bot will PM you with all the instructions. You need to go to the Google form and just press what teams, what team you want to predict. Today, what we are predicting is we are predicting only the uh, group winner. So we will have the, the betting uh, every Sunday. As you know, the tournament is uh, going to take place over six Sundays in total. So today and five more. And you can bet in each one of them separately. Okay, so it seems like uh, we are doing good progress in the back end uh, with the preparation. There is like, seems like only one last thing to fix. So it should be quite fast, I hope. Um, yeah, and we have asked also questions from Lord Brock. Uh, if there are if there are musket players, do I think they will use shotgun run? Uh, actually, seems like you are a little bit late. We talked uh, at the beginning a little bit about the rules, and the runes are banned. Indeed, yes, runes are banned. Runes are not allowed. You cannot use runes. You cannot use doctrine. So all of this will be up. Oh. Maybe we can show the rules again, uh, just for those people who joined in later. Uh, we can go over them. Um... Yeah, let's let's quickly jump to that. And uh, but before we do, 
uh, Far Cryer, how to see the team bracket. If you write exclamation mark help, you will receive all the... That's actually a good thing. If you write exclamation mark help, the bot will PM you with all the commands you can use to check the rules, the maps, and everything else, right? On the official ARI tournament Discord, you are able to watch through the uh, through all these details, and then uh, yeah, you can you can check it there. But uh, don't worry, I'm a good guy, so I will post also here to you the on chat I'm posting right now the, the site where you can check check all the standings, all the groups, all the teams. And yeah, so let's go to the rules. So CB, if you could uh, quickly go to the yeah, movie. absolutely. So this will be the groups, right? So the rules um, that we have is, uh, first of all, of course, uh, no T5 units. We've said it before, I think. And um, so we will not be seeing any Wing 2 Zars, Leo Rangers, Epifias for Falconettis, um, all of those really expensive units in the game that can greatly impact uh, what's going on. They are really strong, but they will not be used today. Uh, so we will be seeing everything up till purple units or T4. So mostly you will see teams use stalwarts for Tiburaccio Imperial Pikes. They are like the, the, the real meta units. And then we always have uh, a lot of blue filler units, uh, mostly Sicalia Militia. They are actually quite popular. Um, we see Namkan, we see Lansknechts, and we also see quite a bit of Javelin sometimes. So all kinds of different units, but not the, not the T5. Then we will only be using the artillery that is already placed on the map. So there's artillery on the walls, of course, on each map. There's artillery on the ground. Those can be used, but teams cannot place any additional artillery. And they can also not use the doctrines. So there are some doctrines, especially in this season, right, which we haven't talked about, but there are quite a few new doctrines um, out there for units that make them more, more effective, but they will not be used today. So all units will have to do it with just their veterancy lines, and the heroes will have to do it without the runes. The heroes cannot use any runes during this tournament. Um, so it will be bare heroes with just their weapon and their armor, which they get from the tournament server, and they're all the same. So all hero classes have the same damage output and they also have the same defensive stats. Then the final rule that we have is we have only three lives per player. So if a player dies three times, he's out of the game along, along with his units. So any units that he still has to or wanted to use are out of the game and this really influences the, the matchups quite a bit. Uh, we've seen a game where Endgegner actually had 200 units left, or they should have. But there were like, uh, I think it was eight or 10 people out of the game because they died too often. And that way they still lost uh, well having more units actually in their uh, unit selection left over. So the, this rule is, um, is pretty big sometimes. Some, some teams never die more than once. There are some players, um, which we can discuss later, actually haven't died at all in like four, five, six uh, matchups, which is really amazing. Especially if you play sieges yourself, you know that how hard it is to not die at all in one battle and still do well. Um, but imagine doing that versus really good teams, like six games in a row. That's just insane level. So those are the rules. No T5 units, no artillery, no doctrines, no wounds, and only three lives per player. Yep. And then we can also quickly talk about the group phases, right? So as you know, as I said earlier, uh, six. Sundays will be the tournament uh, taking place. First four are group phases. So in group phases, we have four teams divided into four groups, so three each. Out of each group, two will advance to the quarterfinals, right? So one will be eliminated. So today, one of the teams will be unfortunately eliminated fully out of the tournament. Other two will advance. In each group, we'll have six games total. Uh, each team will play two attack sides and two defense games so this is a bit different from the previous tournament we wanted to make it more equal so right now right now you need to prove yourself both in attack and in defense right? otherwise you it will be one one so you will go even and last thing is the tiebreakers 
with having six uh, games, right, there is a higher chance of potential ties, so the tiebreakers will be decided in the field battle afterwards. Then uh, after the group phases, so this will be the first four weeks, the last two Sundays will be final bracket. Yeah, and in the final brackets we will have eight teams remaining, three te of oh, four teams will be out, right? They, uh, each, each group will have one team dropping out of the tournament. And the final brackets will be best of threes only. So all teams will play uh, against each other a uh, best of three. If they win two times, they go through, um, but they have to win two times. And the game for third place will be played on the sixth week, like you said. And it will also be played with the final and the semi-final on the same as well. So yep. the finals will be lots of games on one day. They will, actually, they will be action-packed, uh, absolutely. And it will be eight of the best teams that we have. Yep, so cannot, cannot wait for that. And the last thing to talk is maps. Basically, there were three maps uh, chosen to be used in group. Uh, stage out of five, right? Uh, the, the two bans you can see, so Das Wolford and Bali Fortress were eliminated by the ban votes from all the team captains. They wanted to not play on these maps during the group stage, so we have three uh, remaining available. And if I recall correctly, a Clarides versus uh, Arrogant Ravens match, right? Uh, which is coming, will be played on Wolford. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you think about Wolford, uh, General? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting map, definitely. Uh, something I have not casted earlier, so I will have to also work out some camera angles and uh, and so on. Yeah. But uh, I think it's it's it might be it might be interesting to see how the teams. Um, will use uh, the ta will switch the tactics compared to standard like territory war mm -hmm. because uh, yeah this is uh, you have to play differently and if you adjust properly then you can you have higher chances to win if you don't then, then not so yeah Matt. Now, one thing that, that definitely changes compared to siege battles or even territory wars is of course that the, the bridge on the left side if if you if you know the if you know the map, it's like a straight wall on the left side. There is a B point with in front of it a little castle, and the castle connects to B with the bridge, and the bridge is destructible um, by using artillery, of course. But like we said in the rules, there are no additional artillery allowed, so they only have like a few artillery pieces that can actually shoot on the bridge to destroy it. And I've seen in one of the, one tournament where this map was played um, that people just couldn't destroy the bridge in time. So um, that makes for very different uh, strategy possibilities because suddenly, suddenly you can go for the B point and then C opens up as well and you have this whole different dynamic that you have to play out. So Wolford is, uh, is an interesting map uh, and gets changed quite a bit by the rules that we have for this tournament. Yep. So um, cannot wait. Okay, um, let's uh, switch back to the standard talking scene and let's go through the chat because I've seen some of you have posted questions. Uh, Lulabrak asking if I prefer Landknecht or Prefecture Pikes. Well, <laughs> Prefecture Pikes is a, a very, in my opinion, is a very one-shot unit. Just use it and it's gone. So I I think Landknechts are much better because you can, you can use them to charge as well as uh, Prefecture Pikes, but you can use them also with the, I believe it's number three skill, right? Where they have this like slow push, the, the short, um, short range skill, right? So additional ones. And their uh, attack on the, the, the um, auto attack, I think damage is a bit, bit bigger also. So that's that's my opinion. How about you, CB? Yeah, I think so, so as well. Um, the last class uh, third ability, step and hook, is quite effective, right? It's a really strong ability. If you as a hero are in between the last class, uh, now we were pretty fucked up, um, and their charge is insane. I mean, I've I've been the victim of many charges up a siege tower, where I didn't expect Lanskness to be on the on the bottom. They came up and they killed three, four, or five of us at once. And I don't think uh, Pre Prefecture Pikeman can actually do that or have that same damage output. Um, sorry, the 
halberdiers even. Um, so yeah, I think Lusk Nests are a better unit overall, um, but they can be slow on the charge, right? Sometimes if you have used your step and hook and you see an enemy coming in and you want to charge them, um, you have to brace first, which is quite slow, and then charge. So there are definitely are situations or maybe play styles that you might have as a player where it's better to not use the Lusk Nests, but the halberdiers or the perfecture pikemen instead because they have a quicker charge. So yep. yeah, I think that's, uh, that, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I think at least. Yeah. Okay, so I have, uh... okay, so I have a final confirmation right now uh, about Great. Uh, what's going to happen. So seems like uh, the initial teams that were supposed to play, so Nexus, they have resolved all their issues and will be ready in about 10 minutes to start the game. So we will be fighting Nexus versus Eclariders as we mm, had this initially planned in the schedule. So let me open up the schedule then. Give me a moment, please. You can all see. Uh, here. So who will be playing today, when. Of course, the times at the top have to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, but, but yeah, life. You cannot plan for everything. So Nexus versus Eclardes will be playing first and Nexus will be attacking side. So we will have to uh, once more pick the map. Uh, let me let me ask uh, as well. Uh, yeah, so Nexus team finally resolved the issues. Sorry guys, I mean it's like holy moly, it's thirty five minute delay. We've been talking for quite a lot of time, right? But uh, I hope it was uh, as uh, pleasing for you as it was for me discussing with CB on the. Uh, Woods and, and whatnots about the season seven and the teams and so on. So uh, yeah, we will do the teams introduction in a moment. I'm waiting for the confirmation on map uh, pickup when we can ch check the map. We will be doing the map uh, for this matchup in a moment uh, because the the other teams are playing right. So. Yeah, so having Nexus up first against Eclorides, um, I'm really excited for this. I'm so curious how Nexus is going to perform in this tournament. Like I said, we don't know much about them yet, except that they have been uh, very arrogant for a week, they, they said. That was their preparation, talking arrogantly. So uh, I hope we can see it on during the battle as well, like, uh, and how they play, maybe. I hope they surprise us with a few things, or at least put up a good fight. But we know that it's going to be a really experienced team for Zacharites. And it has been, well, actually, slowly getting an experienced team as well, right? Because they have been playing uh, quite a few tournaments. So it's, it should be a good matchup. I'm, I'm, I'm so curious to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the... Uh, I'm still waiting for information when we can do the map. Um pick up uh, for this matchup so we'll see in a moment uh, but yeah we can talk we can start going into the discussion about the, the matchup right so we'll have Clarides versus Nexus and Nexus on the attack Nexus versus Eclarides let's say it like that Eclarides standing so uh, we have just a few minutes left you can confirm. Uh, you can confirm. CB is a good field commander. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you very that. much. <laughs> uh, yeah, guys. So let's go. Uh, Nexus team. Uh, today they are only one team. That the only team that is coming from EU West one. So all other teams, Aragon Ravens, Eclaridis, they are EU two. Nexus is EU one. Basically, they are international team. They uh, they play for quite a long uh, time, since since one hour, 
uh, they are one hour veterans as they describe themselves so i imagine they play since since first hours of the game uh, they joined the tournament to be a bit more competitive but also have fun so i mean definitely a lot of fun is going to happen uh, let's see if it will be fun if you know if you lose so i wish them the best of course but let's let's see what fun will, will come they are uh, aiming for the chicken dinner in this tournament so winner winner i guess first place is, is what they want to 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 achieve and uh, basically yeah they participated early earlier only in the dueling tournament so they don't necessarily have any bigger tournament experience so this might be a disadvantage for them because as said earlier, st uh, earlier they are playing versus Eclarides and Eclarides they are right now playing in the core tournament and they also played in the first Ari tournament so they have definitely much more experience tournament experience coming here to that on the other end as said Nexus team is playing much longer Eclarides coming initially from EU4 server they are playing just for several months Nexus for much much more so you know the, the in-game experience might be the different factor here between the teams to see how they go uh, and yeah did they train as you said TB earlier right they they arrogantly yeah uh, for well, let's hope that uh, that they can put up the the good fight right um show uh, that it's not only talk um i'm so curious that they've been fooling around with us a little bit as well right in the for the tournament with the questionnaires that we had them fill out as well they um they don't want to show how big their game addiction is and they don't want to tell us what their level is in game um but it's it's got to be in enormous right if you play from the first hour um i know there's a few people that have over level 5000 um few people admitted it um but um yeah it's it's so good and they also seem to have quite a few stories like well you, you gotta have a few, quite a few stories if you play if you've played together for so long so um if you're hoping to hear more about those you should bet right Exc exclamation mark bet in chat and vote for uh, nexus hope they get out of group first and we get to interview them um they might be one of the funniest most experienced teams in this tournament not in the tournament scene necessarily but maybe as the players in this game so um yeah i really hope they can put up the good fight um we also know that they actually love the the season they absolutely absolutely like the the berserkers for example so uh, like we said let's hope that they actually use the berserkers maybe they 15 man berserker uh into the first game uh, general who knows would be really fun to see it yeah. uh, we also know that their captain main small uh, Mall is, of course, not the most popular weapon for some, and it is for the others. But he just wants to smash his opponents, and well, who can who can blame him, right? You can smash him, your opponents. You you gotta do it. So uh, yeah, I love it. I think I love this team already, and I haven't even seen seen them play. Um, I hope it's as good as they say it might be. And uh, we can also see in their age, like the the youngest player they have is 22, which is quite old for. Uh, even a gaming community or even uh, like average game team most of our teams have players below the age of 18 right so they are still uh, not adults so they're old as well or older i don't want to say old here but they are older um and they also feel that every map is unbalanced for either attack or defense so they have an interesting perspective on the map as well we know some teams don't like to play it a specific map at all but this team seems to be, it, it be fine with any map okay and as you can hear in the background we are jumping into the game right now so guys Yo. finally we are here ready for the battle let me switch quickly um good, 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 good. to you yes finally 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 after so much time right and uh, actually the teams are um which uh, so we have the next on the right side uh, basically they loaded in like that so the clarinets were already here nexus loaded in later so let me switch that up 
we have all the correct things here. So let's focus on the game. We have the Eclarides team versus Nexus. Eclarides, we can see having a lot of heavy armor, but also quite a few spears and muskets. So definitely we'll see how where it goes. On the other team, Nexus, we have two long bows and one short bow. So very heavy on the light armor compared. What do you think about the units, CB? Yeah, so at first I saw um, the Defender Squad actually taking a lot of Berserkers, but they seem to have switched to Armingers right now. You can see a lot of Armingers on the on the Defender side, so I'm curious if they want to sally out maybe from the fort. Um, it's a really good possibility, I've done it quite a few times as well. Uh, we also see quite a few Javelins on the Ectorite side, like I said in the pre-game. Uh, they do love to play with the Javelin Sergeant, so it seems that... Um, we got what we expected from Aklorites, but also some Berserkers. And on the Nexus side, they are starting with uh, quite a few Gaff in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a short breather, guys. Hype up in the chat. Come on, spam some fucking emotes. Let's go. I cannot wait. Finally, after how many? 45 minutes. Let's go. Neclarides versus Nexus. Nexus defending, Eclarides attacking. Let's see what the team will take. Let's look, let's look. And keep, again, keep an eye out on Balanda and Metchin. They are the MVP players for Eclorites. So, so curious to see how they will perform. Metchin on the Glaive, Balanda on the Mole. They can dish out the damage. We've seen it. Yep, and we can see very, very quickly what is going to happen. The Eclarides team, all of them except Kiwi Choco, have spawned here near the fort. You can see that they are climbing the ladders. They will open up in a moment and try to climb it. Let's see if the Nexus team can react in time. They are already starting to shoot the bridge. They are going to try to destroy it. Remember that in the tournament you cannot place additional artillery. If you will not destroy the bridge immediately, then you are out. And we can see that the attacking team using the trebuchets to try to counter the defenders moving to yeah, the very, very interesting combo. I think that the Nexus team actually started with a lot of archers to shoot at the bridge. So they might actually try to destroy the bridge using archers, I think. Yeah, as we can see right now, indeed, there is a lot of archers, but mainly they are focusing on the units. This might be not that bad idea, because look at that. They are coming to B, but all of them will be quite hurt from the bleed damage. So indeed, flanks. On archers on the flanks, archers on the top, a lot of archers, but will they have enough melee units to defend? We can see trebuchets flying in to try to clear out the stairs, and we can see the Aclarides climbing with all of their team here. This is very good push, very well organized. All of them are coming. They have some small cover from the Namkans in the back, but most of their units are melee. And we can see, yes, they have brought more melee units, more shields, more heavy units, and they were able to just kick Nexus out of here without pretty much any fight, I would say for free. Yeah, totally, we, we haven't seen any player die yet. Um, traps keep flying in, of course, um, as Nexus retreats, um, and they have to defend C next, uh, because B is already fallen. Yeah, and if they are going to continue the tempo and push, they will be able to capture the A point for free, and that's what they are deciding to do. A Claridas, leaving like two people or three people just to cover the stairs, cover the back, moving with most of the force to A side. Where but are since they, are they? they might switch it up here. Look yeah, it seems like they noticed that the defenders of Nexus, they don't really defend A point. There is just two people, as you can see right now, defending A point, and they cannot hold it against like three or four people from Eclarides. So seems like they will be holding here on this upper point, shooting the archers down to all of the enemies trying to kill as many units before they will be pushing the point. So uh, let's take a look at the units that are on the field right now. Um, you can see Nexus is actually putting out a lot of army groups, so they are, are already expecting or expected maybe that Eclorite was going for the C point and get on the ground. But well, as we see, they are, are currently capturing A instead of C. And Nexus is kind of caught with the army groups on the ground there. Indeed. And we have 12 trebuchets left. This is very open map for C and especially for the last cup. So this can be crucial. Only three trebuchets used to capture both A and B. A lot of firepower available for Eclarides for later on. But right now, 
seems like the game cooled off a little bit. Nexus have rethinked their strategy, repositioned, cooled down, pretty much set guys. We lost A and B, but don't worry, there is still two more points to fight for, and they are doing it right now. We can see very nice coverage in the gate with the cavalry. He's waiting, Altas is waiting for, for anyone to come down and attack them from the side. But then we can also see the good trebuch coverage. They are not allowing the defenders to come here. As there is a moment before the push, let's take a look at the stats. Yeah, we can see Machin, right? Uh, he's got the most unit kills already, so he's uh, showing up today again, uh, aiming for that MVP performance once again. Uh, we only got one death so far. It's uh, Kiwi Choco who's got it, and he's been performing pretty well on tournaments quite often as well. Um, and then the units, yeah, nothing special so far, just a few down here and there, except for Machin taking out quite a bit uh, as trebuchets continue to fly in on the ones. Yes, and the trebuchets is the key thing here. This is the big advantage of the attackers. Defenders don't have any more any artillery available. The only one they could use was on the walls, and walls are long gone. So right now, what is happening is a bit of stagnation. I believe that this stagnation is due to the attackers going to heal up and regroup the units. Remember, this attack was quite fluent, quite fast, and quite aggressive. They have not used too many units, they have not lost too many units, but many of their units were under constant fire of several Namkan archers and different ranged units. They have lost a lot of health. Even if they have not died, they have lost a lot of health, and right now they are regrouping, healing back, and we have our first kill happening here. Ah, oh, sorry, this was yeah. two kills already. All right. And I don't want to hype him up, but there is matching again, right? Taking the kill. Um, let's see if he continues his performance. And um, as you can see on the map, right, it's kind of split left to right currently because the supplies are so far stretched out. And this is one of the things that makes it so hard to attack here. The attacker team really has to get the supply on the right side if they want to continue pushing forward because the right supply is so close to the C point, so somehow they need to get down and they must be discussing how they want to approach this because they are waiting for quite a few minutes here. Yeah, this is something I have noticed indeed. The resupply on this point, it takes a lot of time. That's a minus. You have to walk a long way, right? You cannot even go directly here. You have to go here, through the stairs. You have to then climb up, you have to go to the wall, and then you are back. And it seems like the units are just coming back. Look at that, they lost like three, un three minutes just to heal back their units. Imagine if their first push will not work, they will, don't, they will not have too much time left for the second try. Even if they have 1,180 units left, they still might be having some problems with the time if they will not move as soon as possible. Yeah, and Eclorites seem to split up a little bit. They are sending some heroes to A point, uh, but they are going there without units, so they can't really push anything. They also, of course, still have the gate closed, um, which is interesting because they might be able to use the gate to get some uh, army girls through there as well to get maybe quicker supplies because the tree, of course, takes longer to, to get to get there. Um, and when, yeah, right now we just see Eclorites doing what we've seen them doing in other games as well, they keep they stay grouped as a as one big blob and look for opportunity. So before they push, let's quickly because push is coming in a moment. Let's quickly look at the defense. We can see some cavalry on the side. We can see some of the javelins on the side as well. So this will be flank damage coming in. We can see some janissaries. Very nice unit in my opinion. If placed correctly and allowed to shoot for a long time, they can really do the damage. Then we have some Namkans hidden behind here. Another Namkans played very aggressively. Probably this one might be used to bait out trebuchets. Attacking team still 10 trebuchets left. They might be uh, using this unit to bait. And we have a lot of cavalry here to come out from different directions. Remember, attacking team didn't open the gate. They don't have any cavalry available yet. They are in disadvantages here when it comes to mobility. They are pushing out. Let's take a look behind them. Let's see what they do, where they go, how they play this one. We can see they are having a lot of pike units combined with shield units to stop any potential cavalry. We can see Kiwi Choco blocking here from the right side with Imperial Pikes. Very good flank blockage, but there is one more entry. Let's see if this yeah. will be used. They are coming into the point. That is one of the dangerous places, right? Indeed. 
right now we can see as i said cavalry coming right from where i said and also from the front from the left from everywhere the cavalry yeah. is riding from all the directions but look at that there are a lot of heavy armors a lot of shields and pikes they are right now holding okay -ish, i would say yeah, so far they are. Uh, looks like some calf got through, which shouldn't have, but right now they are defending quite a bit, but looks like they are getting overrun slowly. The reinforcements yeah. can keep coming in. Maybe look at the supplies, see if there's new ones coming in as well. And we can see actually on the top, right now from the unit left, that there is 700 units left in the attackers, 900 in the defenders. This was very heavy clash. A lot of units locked on both ends, as you can see, a lot of dead bodies everywhere. I can barely see the floor of the seaport here, but this is going to be successful defense from Nexus team, even though they have lost a lot for it. There is just a couple of cavalry units left. Maybe they will have some more on other players and they will switch it up. But for now, the defense have succeeded. Let's look yeah, at the stats. Let's see how quick they regroup, right? And maybe we have time now to look at the units as well. Um... It's still matching on top, but let's look at Nexus because they got the big win here, right? It's um, Adelos, which got a, quite a lot of unit skills here. Uh, he's also got a kill, so they've been doing really well. Uh, and as we see, Eclorize grouping at the front gate this time. Yes, and we can see that they are spawned here. They very intelligently opened the gate for themselves to allow them to come in, but the timing was just there. At uh, one moment, left to allow them to come in unfortunately nexus team were able to close the gate in front of them so they are climbing up this is still not a problem in terms of unit lost but a big problem in terms of time they have to climb up they have to open the gate they have to allow their cavalry in to have this available for use but right now we can see a big bit of a rush from the heroes still units not there we will see if they will push and put a pressure on the last point or if they're going to continue to the C point. In my opinion, I think they should focus on C and there is not too many time left. Five minutes, you still have nine trebuchets. Use them more aggressively. Try to close out enemy possible angles of attack to just like two and three and control them there. That would be my advice right now. But let's see how Eclarides will use what they have left. Yeah, very curious. We can see on Nexus that they have a lot of lot of pikes this time. The, their army groups are out for a little bit and they seem to have switched to pikes and shields mainly. Um, whereas Ecclorize has a lot of javelins, but over to General they seem to be pushing it. Yep. Seems like they have made a different decision. They are going to pressure the plus side. That's quite good because right now we can take a closer look on the units and on the battlefield. We can see a lot of force coming in, a lot of javelins being thrown, but the problem for attackers here is if defenders are not being pressured on the point, they can resupply and shoot endlessly. And this is what's happening right now. You can see the javelins are throwing and throwing and throwing constantly. We can see the flank coming in, the imperial pipes, even though the coverage is there, the imperial pipes can go through anything. Look at the top, look at the top, look at the top. Acolytes made a big brain move and they brought in their cap. They went all the way around. Let's this see is it. amazing flank. This is great flank. Look at that indeed. Thank you very much, CB. Look at that. They this one them the plus. This is basically yeah. Big yeah, brain move. Might, might be the winner, yeah, for them. At least for this point. Matching wreck, racking up the kills. He's getting three kills already, one sixty unit kills, that's great. But other people are also follow, following up as well. And with this two hundred IQ play, the back flank of two armingers into everything they had not shielded the nexus team left their flank wide open and it was very nicely used by eclarides but time is still ticking there is three minutes left only there is right now nine sorry 10 versus 12 people left 10 attackers left and 12 14 already respond so they are in the disadvantage eclarides three minutes left only will it might be hard for them to, to capture it especially that uh, they used a lot of their trebuchets on the seven are left if they will not close them off and allow them even to come to the point the fight on the point can take so much time that they will not be able to capture it and remember defenders are using a lot of heavy armor so they can also have this stagnated 
Yeah, and the Acolyte's team are still coming from all, from different flanks now, like they used to before. But they are getting flanked as well, it seems. Yep, so a lot of cavalry flanks coming, someone asked before the game if with the Arbingers, yes, on maps like that you can see a lot of Arbingers. So we can see right now a Claridus team, they have more, more uh, manpower on the point itself and they have been able to crush the, the attackers. Right side was attacked by, uh, by the horses, it was countered, the back also. Very nice control of the, all the flanks. They really admit a Claridus did learn their mistake from the first push and right now they really covered all of the flanks. I think they are listening to me because all the advice I'm giving is getting implemented so very good on their end. Yeah, you're, you're improving their gameplay it seems and we are seeing a very different Acrorites in this final, in these last two pushes than what we've seen from them before. They finally managed to time their flanks correctly. Uh, they might have been a little late sometimes but they are attacking from different size, sides and this is totally different than what I've seen from them before. And right now I want to highlight one very important thing. If you look at the top of the screen, there are three numbers I need to read to you. Four minutes left, only four minutes, that's not too much. But the units, 500 left for Eclarides compared to 300 of Nexus, it's almost twice. If they will be able to play very aggressively right now on the Eclarides side, they are able to wipe all the units. And if you look at the lives left, there is still quite a lot of heroes who have two lives left. Remember, you can only spawn twice. You only have three lives. If you see here on the deaths, if someone has two deaths, he can sp he he's on his last life right now. So this is something they need to watch out. Let's look at some players, what they will be trying to do. Here. Yeah, but this is very important because you could see on Eclorite's side that there were five, six, seven players on two deaths already. So if this push fails and those players die, they might have lost their half of their team uh, for the remaining minutes. So Nexus is in a bad position, but they, in terms of heroes, if they kill enough, they might still have the, the advantage. And we can see already some Armingers left over for the attacker team. They are getting the pressure on the flank and we have the full push. Very nice opening trebuch trying to cut down the shields and they are coming in very strong. Look at that, very good usage. Another trebuch coming in the back and trying to clear the damage. Horses from the flank flowing through a lot of the units and I think Eclarides are on the big adv advantage here. They have much more units left. Another trebuch flying in, clearing all the back end. Look at that big thin line it's pushing forward and it's not stopping they are it's able to close the flanks the only one sword unit left on the point that's it that's everything they have yep only few heroes left right now 90 units left nothing else is going to come from the uh, nexus team but it's still not over they have six people uh, alive right now if they will be able to utilize their lives to the advantage and stagger one by one they still might be able to pull it off it's only two minutes it's not that far only I see only one people from Nexus team who died three times cannot respawn. So there is still okay, there is two right now, but there is still a lot of lives left on the Nexus team. If they will be able to do it one by one, they still have a chance. It seems yeah, like it's so well. Look at this. Those those short shorts, they can stay on the point for so long. They just keep coming in one by one from the sides. But can they keep keep doing this for two minutes? I've seen the player do it for a full minute, but it's going to be so hard versus 15 players. There is just a few seconds left on the clock and I think now we have one more short sword coming in, so there are two currently. Oh, they are still doing it, General, they are still doing it. They are still doing it, but... Okay, another spear coming in, but... Uh, okay, a few people spawned. There's still five more coming. And bam. Yeah, it was very close, very close on this one. And very nice match. I was not expecting such a fierce fight from the first opening match, to be honest with you, CB. Yeah, same, same, same. And I think we saw, uh, like, like we said, uh, it seemed like the teams were like feeling each other out. They were, they were waiting, they were looking, um, and suddenly the game exploded. And Eclorides showed some really big improvements. Um, Nexus might be a little shaky, maybe, but yeah, interesting. interesting. Okay, let's right now, take a moment see, of. Uh, as I said, somebody sorry. coming right from minutes. where I said, up and getting credit something, but yeah, okay. Uh, Guys, let's go through the statistics right now because we have a few minutes left before the next fight. Next fight will be against of the same teams but against each other on the different sides. So we will see how they do. But for now, MVP for the Eclarides team. Matt Sheen, 
Congratulations, 4 kills, 1 death, 17 assists and 133 unit kills. That's a lot. You very rarely see scores like that on the sieges. Not to say that this is tournament, many different things are happening. But on the other hand, Nexus team, 5 kills as a short sword. I mean, that's definitely going to be from his units. But yeah, very good usage here. 12 assists as well. Very nice. 3 deaths. I mean, three deaths is what you want to see at the end of the game. They tried, it seems, it makes it visible that they tried their best to defend it. Very nice match, one minute left. And what else can you tell us, CD, about the game? Yeah, again, a match in taking the MVP, of course, right? Um, and as well, Belanda is on the second place. They are their two top performers, that's pretty clear. Um, I'm trying to look at the Nexus team, and uh, we can see three, four players uh, really standing out with the hero kills, right? So I'm going to keep an eye out on them for the next game. Uh, but I really want to look into a clip, if we can, of their uh, second push into the supply. I think we can bring that up. Uh, it just shows how Eclorites really started doing uh, things differently during the game. They fought really hard about it, they, uh, but then they did the big brain move, right? Like we said, um, I think that was such a great push. And I'll give you the time to set it up if you can. Mm -hmm. um, that, was, that, that was wonderful to look at, right? Um, if we take the clip, you can also see how long it, it took them to even get there. And it almost failed because their main push was actually almost going down. Yeah, you, you need to give me a, a bit more time yeah, to I'll prepare it. it. <laughs> so what can you tell us about the post-game screen, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we saw was three, four big pushes, right? Uh, which is what we typically also see. Um, another thing that uh, is pretty um, good to see for the si right side is that all their team members seem to have really participated in this battle. They all have above 50 unit kills. Uh, might not always seem like a lot, but it shows that they were all involved. And you can also see it in their, in their assist stat, right? Almost all of them have assists above 10. Um, so they all worked really well together in this game, as we could see during the game as well. Um, on the Nexus side, they were always flanking from different sides, and you can see it in their stats. Some members really have low unit, unit kills, really low participation as well in the assist. So they might have to think about their next game and see if they can work better together. Or if they put up the flanks, they have to make sure they work. You could see on the first attack that um, they managed to flank really well, um, and that was how they beat uh, Eclorites on the first attack, but after that they were just too disjointed to actually follow up. All right, and I am ready with the first reply. All right, let's roll it. Okay, so let's see, is this the first attack? Yeah. Yep, so shall we start? Oh yeah, you can start. Yeah, absolutely, go for it. Right now we can see as I said. Right, so this is the first attack, and as you can see, right, all the cap going to the left side. So here you can see Nexus really, really flanking so well, so well. They were coming in from the left, from the top, from the right. It's just they are everywhere, and Eclorites just have way too much to think about here. Um, they try to block their different sides, like you said. We saw Dwoa uh, block the bottom side with his Imperial Pikes, but it just, it just wasn't enough. And we saw Aklarai getting swarmed over. Um, so that was the first push. Uh, really well played by Nexus there. Okay. But they had to use a lot of cap there, right? And I think that broke them up. They really relied on the defense there with their cap. We saw them take it out really early. Um, and then uh, it was over for them after that. But let's look, let's look at the second clip because this was so good for Aklarai. Yeah, let's go. So here we focused on the bottom side, right? And you could see uh, the cap going around so long, and here they come in, and they just annihilate everything at, that is there. Just look at those numbers going down. It's so, so good. So juicy. It, this it, 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 it's going to feel so good to do this in a tournament game, right? Yeah. Amazing. To pull off something like that in a tournament is definitely a highlight moment of the, I think, whole day. Might be even the whole tournament. Might be already. Might be. We will see how it goes further on. Let's jump to the last clip. Yeah, the last clip is just Eclorites grinding and out, right? Here they do what we've seen them do so many times before in games. They just group up as 15 players um, and push up. 
And in this time, this time it actually worked because they just had more numbers and in terms of units. Um, they also got a little flank there with the army gears, which got through. Look at that, taking down quite a few units. And here, I would actually like Akrarites to spread out more, right? Send some units to the bottom side, try to go in from the left or the right. Um, but they just got it done because the traps kept, kept flying in and they just had more push there. And uh, that gave them the win in the end. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for the additional input. Uh, CB. And guys, please write on chat. How did you like the game? Because in my opinion, it was very, very interesting. I think a lot of uh, unusual plays, a lot of uh, usual plays as well, but very well done. So this is uh, something that uh, really, really was nice to watch. Yeah, and I love uh, the comments in the chat. They are saying, uh, well done, you destroyed veteran players from EU1, right? And this is true. These players all are all veterans and Aclorites uh, made short work of them in the end. Curious how they will bounce back. They are veteran players again, so um, I'm pretty sure they got a good mental state. So I'm sure they will figure something out for the second game, right? They they gotta they gotta gotta do better there. Yep. Uh, okay, so we can see already the first match is uh, updated on the site. You can follow all the um, all the information on the tournament if you write exclamation mark help. Then you will receive the invite to the Discord, and in the Discord you can see all the information you would like to know. So, so this is something that's going to be definitely interesting to watch further how we will develop in the market. Uh, so the next game is coming up in few minutes. Uh, we are still looking into the um, issues of other team right now. Seems like other team also have some problems joining. Not sure if they will be able to do so. So maybe we will basically run the same battle just a different way, right? So right now Nexus will be the attacking team. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's talk quickly uh, about some of the some of the also units that were used in a moment, uh, and then after after we finish uh, after we have the clean information on who will be playing next, we will be able to talk about the next matchup and the next team. So CB, um, my highlight unit here would be actually Arbingers, but from the other end. So. Armingers were used quite a lot, and they were used very effectively. As we have seen on your rundown of the replays, in, in one of the actions they were key thing that allowed Eclarides to capture the supply point and win. Right? So this was definitely the, the highlight for Armingers. But in my opinion, in all other actions, all other things that happened, Armingers were used very extensively, but they were a, they were they were basically countered either by nice placement of pikes, either by some ultimates of some of the heroes, which were able to stop the charges, either by a lot of, you know, time it took for the cavalry to go behind the flank and prepare and whatnot. And during that time, they were constantly being fired upon by the archers or some other ranged units, right? So many things have happened that countered the Arlingers. And in my opinion, this is something that is very good highlight. That, as you can see, there are many different ways you can counter cavalry. And I mean, definitely, I will rewatch this game later on fully to capture some some things that I missed. But there is a lot of things you can take away and implement it into your strategy for territory war or when you are playing with your friends on normal sieges, how to counter it. What is your opinion, CB? Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I think um, Nexus used maybe too many CAF on the first defense, right? It, it was successful, but like you said, so many CAF or Armigers also got caught in pikes. Maybe if they had uh, a little bit more infantry, they st still could have flanked with three or four Armigers and also have three or four more for the other defenses. Um, because we saw how effective those flanks are. And at that supply, right, the, the second attack from Aclarites, where they got that great flank off, you could see that just two armigers were enough to just win that win that battle for them. 
So uh, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I think um, teams will have to be smart about using it. I mean, we've seen it. That is great. But if you do it from, from the front and teams expect it, it just doesn't work. They get annihilated so quickly. So definitely. Um, some other units that, I, uh, that, stood, that stood out for me were the Berserkers. Um, we haven't seen the exact stats. I, I hope some teams maybe have made screenshots uh, how many kills they got with their Berserkers. But I know that Acrorites uh, used two of them on their first, uh, first attack. Um, so I'm really curious how well they did. Um, we haven't seen them make a great impact, but they are one of the other units that can really flank well. Um, they have to go around a little bit as, as well, of course, but they are so, such a small unit. They can hide in a small corner or they can go through very small corridors and flank uh, the enemy team as well. And they, they don't need much to deal with a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, and I have actually good and bad news. Good news is that I know what's going to happen next. Bad news is what is going to happen next. Unfortunately, one of the teams that were uh, that should be playing today, Arrogant Ravens, their main leader had have some PC, his PC pretty much died. He's not able to join, and then they have some also some some issues with some players uh, not able to show up. So they are not there in the force. Therefore, unfortunately, officially, I guess we can say in a moment or let's let's keep it to the end of the day to officially say it but right now it seems like the teams will be on the tour for today so the arrogant ravens they will be uh, they are eliminated yeah they're out but uh, we still got two great teams general i mean we saw this first match it was so good and we've seen acrolytes improve so much over the games that they played um, I hope Nexus does as well, and now they get the chance to do it in a best of three, um, which is great experience for the quarterfinals as well. Uh, as we know that both of these teams will make it out of groups currently. Um, way quicker, than, of course, than we expected and maybe hoped for. Um, but what a great chance to see how well they do, because suddenly this is a best of three, and that is a different dynamic as well. Definitely. So right now uh we are talking still uh, about uh, how we should do this uh, seems like there will be one more match of course which is planned right now so the two both both teams same up different sides uh, and then we will have pretty much best of three i guess right so one more one more uh, match as a, as a show up match yo yeah, let's uh, let's get to the chat then. I mean, we will still need for a few few moments to to discuss the game. So I will extend the next game timer. And uh, yeah, let's let's go with the chat. So thanks guys for the hosts. Yo yo, all welcome. Hi Pablito, Duto, Pepator, Beard of Kin. Thanks for the follows. Hi to all of you guys who who were saying hi. But yeah, we were quite busy here with CB and um, watching up the game. Uh, yeah, so in a few minutes we'll start the, the same game but uh, switched sides. And before we do, maybe CB, you can tell us some more details about the teams we just seen. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's uh, another interesting comment in the chat as well, which is um, from Pabito G2. Veterans players don't cover back. Um, yeah, this is true, right? Um, they are so experienced and you can't expect them to actually cover their back. Um, there were some players that could have seen the calf walk all the way around. They walked past so many units and heroes. Um, so I'm so curious if, 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 if something like this is going to happen again. Um, of course, next is going to be on the attack this time, uh, which might be an advantage for them based on what we just saw, right? Um, they managed to flank really well and quicker than Acrorites, I think, on the first attack. So hopefully they will come up with a great, uh, great plan for the attack and for Eclorites, we saw them use a lot of javelins, um, even in the attack. But like we said, the, the supply is so far away if you, if you, are, if you attack on Wallfort, especially in the beginning. Um, so they might run out of, uh, of, of javelins to throw, um, but on the defense, it might be better. So let's see if this favors Eclorites as well. Um, again, if they hold the eight points, you can use javelins on the walls to throw down on the calf that is down below. 
So something like this might be interesting to follow and see what uh, what both teams will use in this uh, in this next battle. Yeah, and to see the, uh, considering how the strategy went from the attack team, right? They fully rushed B point at the beginning. They pushed out the Nexus team uh, like out of the walls with that one move, right? And they had B and A point pretty much for free, right? Just few units were lost, no heroes, few units were lost here and there. Do you think that we will see right now a bit different opening? Or would you expect that any team that will play on this map, either today or even in the future stages, will always pressure B and the Fortinus. Yeah, it's so interesting. We'll have to see. Um, so far, we've of course only seen this strategy used, right? Um, but we know that the right far right siege tower on this map is also really good because you can um, get a really good foothold on the right side. But most of the time that side is good because you can build artillery on the corner, you can shoot at the A point and you can get it that way. Um, but right now you cannot build artillery. So teams will have to bring some other units like Sikali and Militia maybe. We've seen them play a lot. Uh, maybe on this attack, they can be really good. But then again, the supply is so far back that ranged units might not always work really well if you want to go for the A point through the Siege Towers. So I think that's one of the reasons why getting B um, can be so crucial. Uh, because it's really easy to get on the walls. You get a free walk up. The bridge is too hard to destroy, it seems. And maybe teams will come up with something else. And also on the B wall, um, you're so open for trebuchets. So once you start battling it out there, just are going to eat the trap. There's no way around it. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It might be a, a really good strategy, but I'm sure some teams will surprise us. We also haven't seen people use the gate, right? The supply is also open. Uh, the supply from the defenders, you can get that if you open the gate. So yeah, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Okay, uh, so considering what we just seen, uh, let's maybe split the game into two halves, right? So A, B, uh -huh. let's say first half, and then uh, C, C, D, and plus the second half. Um, I will talk about the first half. Uh, let's basically try to analyze what happened and how we could counter it, right? So I will give you a, a moment to think about the second part of the game while I'll be talking about the first. So in my opinion, how the defender team could react better, how the Nexus team could react better. They could play or try to play more aggressive on B point, right? They could put the pressure on the B point much further up. They could rush some people down even, take some, you know, some green or, or whatever, you know, your kind of a waste units and just occupy time. They could even, you know, maybe take a few heroes there and try to stop them as well. But the bridge is open for trebuchets yes you need to watch out for the trebuchets but then on the other end it's a good choke point so even one pike unit with advance right one advance can stop the whole charge in place for quite some time and playing more aggressively over there can give you enough of the time to, to pretty much pretty much destroy the remaining remaining health of the bridge another thing is something we've seen in the area tournament one is when there was a Three, three stack of the Rattan Marksman, buffed by the uh, Slave hero. The damage buff was given, and they were destroying the towers very fast. This is oh. something this which could be used here potentially also. So maybe we'll see something like that. That's 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 my opinion on how they could react better. And for the second half, what do you think defenders could better? Yeah, I think the defenders have to really use their supplies so well. Um... They have two supplies, uh, one is closer to A on the right side, one is farther back uh, at the final. But on the left side you have this high ground where you can um, really put a lot of archers and if you split them out enough, you have a great way to shoot at C, but also be able to still walk back quickly to supply, be safe, and maybe switch units at your supply, take the calf and rush to the other side and help your team if needed. And that way you can always flank from one of the two sides um, I think that's that's one strategy that teams might be able to use. Um, on the right side at the supply, it's, it can be so hard to get it because you cannot trap really well on that point. So as a defender, you have a really good chance to hold that side as long as you make sure the attack team doesn't flank, right? Like we saw just now. 
Um, but it's, yeah, that should be very doable. It's, it's not too hard to watch two sides. You only have to look, your, look at your back and your front, and mm -hmm. that's it. Yep. So, yeah. Okay, so CB, we are uh, jumping into the game shortly, so yeah, if you could join the good. lobby. Uh, in the meantime, yes, uh, Varak, the leadership is capped at 700, yes. Basically, every player have exactly equal chance. There is no crafted equipment. Everyone have the same equipment available, same um, um, armors you have is just the rock armor, Cartman, or the medium armors or card defense, right? without any bonuses. All of them are legendary. For the units, you have the purple schematic weapons, right? So uh, Arb Arbiter for the Muskets, for example, right? For the Spear, you have Dragon Hunter. So no bonuses at all. Everyone have exactly same uh, same equipment. Then there is no runes. There is no doctrines. Every unit is maxed level out, right? So basically that's that's equal as well. Every player have only three horses available. They are the uh, Sirocco, I believe was the name. Sirocco, yes. Sirocco, the, the blue horses with uh, blue armor. So very, very balanced, right? And in the units department, no golden era. So there is also a lot of things happening here. Okay, so we are ready to jump to the game. So let's move on. Yeah, let's go. Ooh, wow. Let's right. see. Oh. Ooh, wow, yeah. No artillery. Yes, Hydra. There is no artillery available on the one which is placed. So Nexus team attacking a Clarides defending. Let's see. For the hero choices. Uh, last time the Nexus have got a bit of light armor. Seems like they did switch it right now. They have only one light armor player with longbow. They have two medium armor with musket and spear. Everyone else, heavy armor. Mouls, a lot of mouls. This is something interesting. We will keep an eye on that. On the other end, for Eclarides, a lot of heavy armor, obviously. Short sword, very good to stop the unit push. But we can also see four medium armor. So this is something also to keep an eye out. And what you can tell us about the units? Yeah, we're seeing uh, more of a split this time. Um, Nexus is bringing a lot of calf again. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven units of uh, army girls, so they look to flank. Only three so far on the Eclorite side. Sorry, Nexus has got seven. We do see a lot, a lot of Lanskness on the Nexus side for the attack. So maybe they got some uh, plan on there as well. But we mainly see pretty standard setup this time: stalwarts, fortos, and imperial pikes. Two squads of Berserkers as well, and that's about it. So yeah, pretty standard. Okay, and I see a question on the chat. Uh, Nexus team is from EU1, and Eclarides is from EU2. They were EU4, but uh, after the match, they merge. They are EU2s. Someone asked about the service. So let's see. First game won in attack side by Eclarides, but only one minute left on the clock. So this mm -hmm. was very interesting. Let's see how the Nexus team will perform in the attack right now. And before we start, let me tell you one thing, CB. I am very glad that a lot of people, me being Polish, <laughs> I'm glad that a lot of people are using the Hussar skis. They look so amazing. We are jumping into the game and let's see for the Nexus team. Seems like they have a little bit different approach. They are going to push some of the towers right away and they are using artillery to shoot something. Right now they are countering enemy artillery, maybe they will also open the gate, we will see. But we can see that also most of the team is pushing the port. On the other end, Eclarides, they spawned some people in here. And seems like they are going to try the more aggressive thing I talked about a little bit. So I'm very glad that we are playing this game and we think the similar things, similar comments are here. So we have Lantnex defending here and one Namkan unit. Namkan unit is very front aggressive. We'll see if this will be enough. And then a lot of Namkas trying to shoot at the bridge. It is surprising. We saw Nexus trying to trap one of the Namkan units at the back, but oh, look at that. The bridge is down. This is yeah. so big. I mean, in the cost of Kiwi Choco, unfortunately for him, in very great outfit of Hussars, the Hussar skin. <laughs> That's such a worthy sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, they close this flank fully, right? This is one of these maps 
where oh, this is. Look at that, the Iron Sea Star gets destroyed as well. Oh, Necronauts is so well here. Yeah, they destroyed both of the towers. The left one, actually, this was not pushed, but this is very low HP, and only middle is pushed. What is good and what I like is the use of Martellatory. If you are not aware, if you can see this shield over here on the tower, they are uh, basically having additional defense. What Martellatory Special Unit gives you is when you push the towers and siege equipment, this is getting defense bonuses. This is what they are using. And probably, we will see in a moment, but this is something that might allow them to get this tower to the goal, because other towers were pushed by non no, not Martellatory, and this was the problem. And this tower is getting so close, it might just get destroyed at the end. But also, look at the other thing that you talked about. The left wall is also getting destroyed slowly. It's at 43% right now, as the Teach Tower does manage to get there. Indeed. And let's see what Nexus team will do. They have only one entrance open so far, except for the ladders, of course. But for the reliable entrances, only one is here. And they are slowly coming here, regrouping. And uh, please look at the unit choices. So many lance nests. We talked to them about them before, and they are great hero killers. Um, both teams are looking to cheese this one out, it seems. Um, yeah. This could be a really interesting game right now. Clarid is having six lance nests. That's, that's quite interesting, definitely. So even though the gate is open, actually, I lied to you. Sorry, they have two reliable entries open, the gate and the tower. Seems like they are going to choose the tower. Fortunately for them, the Huacha here was not destroyed and they are using it to their advantage. Remember, you cannot place any additional artillery, but this one was left by the defenders. So that's a nice, nice thing. And the walls destroyed as they're moving in. Yeah, walls is destroyed, so this can open other entry points for later, but right now they are coming in here with the push. So, we can see that the push is here. A lot of landness indeed. Some of them are moving on the flank, they will be charging in a moment, but they will be stopped by double Imperial Pikes from the Nexus team. Trebuchets flying in, blocking all the supply coming to the A point, and it seems that this is going to be won. I might say that this is quite easy A point capture, considering that the so whole Eclaridus was here. This was so well done, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this was so well done. I hope we can look at it at, after the battle. They I get fenced at the staircase, they throw down their trebuchet and they all move back at the right time and now they continue to push for the supply. Yes, and as we can see, they are actually rushing it. They are not allowing the defenders to regroup. A Claritas team, of course, already some of them have, have switched their units, but not, maybe not, not all of them. So we can see that they are continuing the push. I mean, the easy push on A with many units left very healthy allow them to do like a this this move right they don't need to resupply what we've seen in the first battle they don't need to do some special things they can just go and like where they want and what they are doing right now is they are putting pressure on the plus side closing in the clarides but they have seen that there is pretty much nobody on the c point and they are what look at that they just what close them in Eclorites was, was expecting an, an attack from the front, but they did not cover their back. They did not put out scouts on the left side to see what the Nexus was doing. And look at this, this is so easy for Nexus, so well played. Eclorites was just grouped up too much on the supply. Uh, they're still trying to push through, they might get it. But let's see what's going on. Yeah, the trebuchet I zoomed in was actually quite crucial. Unfortunately, it was too late to stop the Eclorites team coming away. But right now, seems like they are still going to continue with their push and look at that we missed that but they are just driving with the heroes on horses nothing else the main point the clarides they are very very sleepy in their defense they have missed the a point they have missed the c point and right now look at that there is only two heroes from a clarides on the main point versus much more available for the nexus right now okay units are here seems like the game will slow down for a little bit because a client this were able to touch all the rotating units for the Nexus and kill them and secure the area nearby, except this. <laughs> this yes, is... God, but look at this, they also got the left supply. Eclorites does not have anything to do here. They cannot even get new units anymore. They All, the, all they can do is die and hope they can respawn with new units in time. Um, this is such a quick game. This might be one of the quickest already of the might be, but not necessarily will be. There is still a lot of healthy units left from the defenders. The Claridas, they have a lot of Imperial Pikes, I can see around here. They still have some Javelins around, so they potentially can use it nice. 
to and they're uh, they're going to need it because a lot of cap is coming out right now i see one two three four or four squads of army is coming in on the right side yes and all of them are coming from behind we will see if nexus team will use what was their mistake in the previous game and leaving the back open against a Claridus here and it seems like they do they come from the back but a Claridus, they are not having this look at that very nice imperial stop on the back but the fight on the main cap is right now the most crucial thing a lot of artillery uh, sorry a lot of trebuchets were used in the meantime we were not able to capture them but the horses were crucial to capture the point and clear out the defenders a Claridus have just nine nine people left most of them are unfortunately blocked around and cannot even enter the cup so to be honest they retook the supply so they, they have to get on to stay in a point to get the units army are spawning in they need to be quick but can they get on it no they cannot it's yeah. too late a moment i go i just wanted to say it's over it is over but Absolutely. it's over that was a very quick game what a game general what a game what do you think yeah this i'm, I'm so trying good. to i'm trying to think about what just happened <laughs> <laughs> because they just so quick. They just captured A. They captured A. They captured they captured A. They faked the supply. Captured C. Went to the uh, last point. Fake the last point. Captured supply point in the back and then won. That's yeah how you can sum it up, I guess. But still. I'm, I'm preparing a really long clip right now. We just got to look at this for a whole minute to just to see what happened here. This this was so, so good, so good. Definitely. So let's, let's take a look. Right let's take a look at the stats. As you can see, yeah. the MVP on the Nexus team, Next Vero. Congratulations. Five kills, three assists. Uh, I mean, considering that there is just few kills in the whole game, getting five of them is extraordinary achievement it is great uh, cap points i mean you can very clearly see that much yeah one or two people were, were dead so probably they were the opening guys but other than that mm, almost everyone have 100 plus participation point meaning that they were full team on cap so this is nice capping all the supply points and this is what gave them win on the other end for the eclaridas team the mvp in the razer b only one person getting B. One assist, 47 unit kills, a lot of the defense time. So this is, this is what gave him MVP status. And you can see only one, two, three kills. Only three kills coming in from a Claridus team. This is very, very, very hard for what we just see. Yeah, that is unbelievable. So and what else on the stats? Yeah, so unexpected as well, right? Uh, we talked about it at the, at, at the beginning of the game when it, the first couple of minutes went so well for Eclorites. They managed to destroy the bridge, which is great. Uh, we haven't seen that before. Uh, then they also destroyed a couple of siege towers, but that one siege tower that hit, it just took them by surprise, maybe. Uh, they just were, weren't ready for the attack on A. It, it just took one pike advance in a trap, and of course, the whole of Nexus, and they got it. All right, and uh, while I open the battle analysis screen. Yeah, yeah, please do, please do. And wait one sec for me to get ready there, but yeah, this was so good. Yeah, right. so... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um... I mean, just, just over six minutes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the main highlight here, I guess, right? On the post battle crazy. analysis. <laughs> And then you can very clearly see that the land uh, from Eclarides, they had six, I believe, right? On the A point, didn't yeah. work too well for them. So this is something uh, to, to, to maybe think about for the future, right? Blue units, some of them, like Condottieris and Lachnex, they are very nice, um, you know, middle ground between the leadership spent and what they can do. But purple units are much more stronger. Oh, I guess there was a bit of a lack of, of purple units there, but yeah. But yeah. Okay. Then they just had a few clashes here around the plus points and, and then, yes, you, you've seen C point, C capture, plus capture and main point. Mm -hmm. capture. Yeah, let's maybe, maybe start with the first attack if we can, um, see if we can look at it properly. Um, I think Eclorites really didn't expect um, Nexus to, to be so quick on the wall 
Um, I mean, six tower hit, and within, I think, 10 or 15 seconds, they were on top of the wall. Um, Acroys just didn't have time to switch to units on their supply. They had too many numcons out, they had too many lance cans out. They just didn't have the, the shield walls in front to block Nexus from getting in. And they also didn't have time to walk to the other side of A, as we will see in the clip. Yeah, we, start. we are ready with the first clip. Let's switch the scene. And shall I play it? Yes, go ahead. All yours. So here we see Nexus getting on, and the traps keep flying in. They went past a little bit. And if you look at on the stairs on the right side, you can see one pike advance going in. It stops all the Lonskins from going in. They tried to raise, tried to charge, but they just couldn't do it. You see the trap? I was thinking this might be a suicide trap, which they are apparently famous for. But look at this. They are just getting out of the way so quickly. And even if Nexus, or if Echorize was coming up, they would have gotten trapped. And you can see Nexus covering the left side as well, and done deal. So easy. Well done by Nexus. Really well done. Textbook example. Very well. Move to the second one. Totally. I really love this one. Look how they baited Echorites into believing that they were all pushing on the, uh, on the supply from the front, and then they moved all, all of them to the, to the left side. And Echorites tried to switch around, right? They sent five, six people. But they were too late, and then they split off for Nexus, and they stand on C point, and Acrorites is just too late on rotation. And this is what we've seen from them go wrong in other games. They are too slow on anticipating what their opponent might do, and they just look too much. And here you can see Acrorites, they are pushing through, of course, because they have more people on that place. But the C point, it's gone. And look, now they start pushing, and this is so smart from Nexus. They go straight to the final, so Acrorites have to follow them. And this allows Nexus to get the supply. And then, as we will see later, they can start spawning army girls, go to the final, and they just keep roll rolling over them. This is such a great snowball from them. And look at the hammer on the top left, taking another supply. Eclorides just wasn't ready on the map. Definitely. Yeah, so this was, this was very, very nice movement. Very nice. Certainly. And then the last one, yeah, it's, this is something about this map. Like, if you get that final left top supply as an attacker, it's so hard as a defender to come back because the only units you have are the ones that are out on the field and you cannot get any And we could, we could see it. Like, uh, Nexus moved around really well with the calf. Our Echorize actually put up a pretty good defense, but they couldn't get any new units. So any reinforcements that came in, they were too late. Um, we saw them try to get the supply back after a while. I think in a few seconds you can see the supply being captured on the, on the right side of the screen, right? Um, but by the time the supply was back in Acrorite's hands, look at the camp. It's already gone and there's no way to come back from this position. And then it was just you know, finishing up for a Nexus. They could just keep killing use, keep killing the heroes. Great win for Nexus. Very convincing. Very convincing. Definitely. Congratulations to Nexus. Bringing back 1-1, one to one, right? They were down one game, but the tie is there. So, we are starting in 4 minutes. Actually, sorry for that. I need to play the counter a little bit. We'll be starting in 4 minutes. Uh, let me move to the game. By the way, CV, we are... The, the lobby should be open, so we can join over there. Okay. We'll be playing on a field map, field battle. So, the decision behind it, as you might be not aware, it's actually quite simple. We wanted to have as equal chance as possible for the teams to resolve the tiebreaker between themselves. And siege maps, they are nice. Right, some of them, uh, some of their, um, some of them are more, um, some of them are easier for attackers. Some of them are a bit easier for the defenders, of course. But this is, you know, all, it all depends to to the to the players, right? Some of them like this, some of them prefer that. The map we are going to play, which is Emerald River, this is very well balanced map in terms of like mirroring, right? The distances to same points is very similar if not the same for the both points uh, then you have a lot of classes around the map and they are also exactly uh, in the same spots right then the mirror thing is there 
So this is something that will allow the teams to uh, to basically play it on equal um, ground and, and you know resolve the question we have right now of who is better from these two teams. Yeah, exactly. And you you almost after looking at these first two games, you almost want them to meet up to meet back up in the final, right? So they might both they will both go through a different final bracket, so they even could end up in the final um, if they are good enough uh, against the other teams. Um, you almost want to see a third or fourth final match to see if Nexus actually has overcome Acrorides. Um So yeah, the field battle is going to be a pretty fair decider, I think. Um, if I look at the comments in the chat, people really enjoying the tournament so far. Thank you for sticking with us in the after the, the delay. I think the first two matches have really delivered so far. It's been absolutely amazing. Thanks for the comments as well. Um, and yeah, it's been it's, it's been so much fun for us as well. Yeah, and we'll be starting very short in about a minute and a half. So let's focus on the next match. Uh, seeing what you have seen right now, CB, what do you think? will be the one one highlight what we should expect and i will yeah. i will test you on that one if you are yeah, right. totally like so so what i think is the has been the main desire in these first two games is how quick teams rotate right this this game is all about timing how quick can you be ready for the other team or how quick can you surprise the other team and i think we've seen nexus in this last game do that so much better than and then right they were quicker on the rotation they were two or three steps ahead of them um, and in a field battle you have to be so quick so i would give the favor to nexus right now currently what about you what do you think then um to be honest the field maps i think yeah the key thing from my perspective to understand for the teams would be the key advice if i would give and is to think differently right Mm -hmm. very rarely play field battles on, on standard games on the territory world definitely much much uh, more often but this this map is, is not hot and uh, usually what i observe from my experience is team are running around and trying different things that it might not necessarily work too well for them at the end so i want to see and capture and i will try to capture my best ability if the teams will choose some very intelligent strategy, very well thought thing, right? Because, you know, you can go to three points with five people, you can go to two points on the with seven, and eight somewhere else. You can go five here, five here, and then at five on cavalry only between. <laughs> there are a lot of options, right? And then usually, if you think about field battles, what do you think about? Golden cavalry. And here we don't have golden units available. So this exactly. is something which we need to see how the teams will adjust to right? this is this yeah. is non-standard thing and i cannot cannot wait yeah me too and uh, this is so interesting right we saw the siege battles they're all about infantry most of the time with a few calf flanking but field battles might be totally different we don't know we haven't seen any of these teams play a field battle especially not in tournament scene um, so I don't know, maybe we will see just Cav, right? I mean, there's a few really cool, good Cavs out there from uh, not just the Army Gears. I mean, there are CPEs from season uh, four. They are amazing, uh, or they can be amazing, right? They have the Gallop, they have the uh, 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 Charge as well, and they can also uh, jump up and down. It's, it's amazing. And then we have uh, a few other blue and green as well that have really strong charges and short cooldowns so they can charge uh, 20 seconds or 50, 50 seconds later they can charge again and this could be really good but then again we also have the pikes right we have the fortebraccio we have the stalwarts that are so effective against calf and maybe even some uh, gunners right a shield wall with a gunner behind it they can also stop calf quite effectively um so Really general, this is going to be so hard for us, I think. Um, there's going to be so much going on, most likely. It's, yeah, it's going to be fun, no doubt. Yeah, and uh, the, that's a good point you're mentioning, right? Like Elite Prefecture Cavalry. I just reminded myself last time when I used it. It was a long, long time ago, but this is very fast unit, very agile. You can very nicely flank it. 
flank with it, right? So we shall see if, if this will come to the to true. And right now we are ready to go to the game. Nexus versus Eclarides, the tie breaker on Emerald River. If you are aware of this map, good. If not, let me give you a quick highlight. There are two main camps here and here, and then there are three points. B point, which is equally on the same side, like in the middle. And then you have C point, which is closer to the blue team, and A point, which is closer to the red team. You have few crossings. These three main ones can be crossed by cavalry. And then you have the small crossings, which are uh, infantry on the... No, they are also cavalry, I think, accessible, right? But there are stairs. There are several stairs because the map is very different in the height and so on. And there are places where cavalry cannot go. But this is enough of the map. Let's talk about the heroes and units CD. Yeah, for units, uh, I think the heroes are pretty much the same as what we've seen before. Um... Few, uh, just a few glaives and spears sprinkled in between there. Not so much light armor anymore. Uh, for the units, uh, we see that Eclorides has few players with um, two calves, but mostly just one. So we still see a lot of uh, infantry. Same for Nexus, but they do have um, quite a few Lanskness more than on the other side, I think. There's also Harbour Sergeants. This is the first time we, we will see that unit. Um, they can be really effective against um, not T5 Cav, let's say, and maybe not Armiers. Um, yeah. But they have good brace, they also have a decent charge, um, but they are sometimes a bit clunky to use. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've seen here or there uh, some blue cavalry as well. I wonder if this will be Salamchit cavalry, which can use either swords or. They are mainly sword cavalry, but they can also effectively use bows. But there is also Corchins, which is full. Oh my god, this is going to be. So hardcore to watch. This is going to be crazy. Yeah. The fog. The fog is hardcore. Okay, let's focus on the game. B point, not really contested. We can see the teams have spawned pretty much half, half here, half here. We can see that the Nexus team. Uh, sorry, this is Eclarides. Uh, so the Eclarides, I need to it's, quickly switch it. It's 10 from Eclarides on the, on the A point and 5 from um, Nexus on the A on on the A point, and on the other side it's the opposite, and there's only one player from Nexus going for B. So B is uncontested, and then we have 10 versus 5 on the C point, advantage of Nexus, and the A point is advantage for Eclorides. Yeah, so this is good highlight. B point for free, very nice. And here, yeah, so the defense, infantry defense from the Eclorides is coming, the cavalry charges are coming from different sides, but they are stopped. One advance, second advance, very nice. And then in the middle, we can see also shields stopping a lot of units. So this is very nice defense. Considering there were only five of them against much more enemies, I think they are doing good. Yeah, and over on the A point, it's actually going pretty hard, I think. Uh, they still do not have captured it. Uh, C point is getting captured back, this is good. Um, A point is, is safe right now. Uh, B point still uncontested, of course. Um, Smokemore is still walking around it. He got it and he wants to keep it. Yeah, and C point, I guess uh, it's case close, right? They they killed the, the enemy with much more forces, and uh, yeah. that's what allowed the Nexus team to, to take a, so, a win here. And we can see both teams uh, doing the same thing. They're capturing the supply that's closest to their objective, and they are it seems to be that they are going for the main point, main camp. Uh, this might be a race, uh, General. Yeah, if you are not aware, conquest point uh, conquest works like that. You need to capture two points, uh, either CB or, or BA or whatever, and then the main camp is unlocked. Over here you can see the timer, right? So the main camp can be captured, and on the top you can see the percentage. Whoever has the uh, most percentage at the end wins. So we can see very good pressure from both teams on the main points, but we need to see who will be faster. It's very hard to stream two sides yeah, right this now. this is going so quickly. Um, I feel like uh, Nexus is losing out right now. They are losing uh, people, but look at that. Machine is going down. Next series is going down. It's one by yeah. one, but Nexus is down. First points coming out from Nexus. Coming down. Yeah. There is one last player, yeah? And they are capturing. So they are capturing right now the point. If no one else from Nexus team will be able to spawn and come here, this is done for the Nexus. They are trying to move and block the spawn points. This is a very good idea, but will they have enough people? The spawn point here have four ways you can go out, so I don't think they will be able to fully block it. But right now, they are winning the game with capture. 
Artificial yeah, sense left. Those respawn prime timers need to come in quickly right now. Um, of course, um, the, the respawns will be so strong because Akrai's units have been low, down, or dead. So it might still be possible for Nexus to take it back with the SV so quick. Yep, and we can see that they are blocking the point. And this is the key thing that happens. You can see the timer have run out. They don't have two points anymore. They cannot capture, so the, it is locked. And this is something that might hurt them in the long run. A Clarkest team losing that and they are also losing a point. This is going to be problematic right now. If you have triple cap, the points will also go down. So if they will be able to capture a now, they will be bleeding the points from the Nexus. So sorry from the Eclarides. So let's see if they will be able to do it. Longbow fighting 1v1 versus Spear with just two or three units. And yeah, he's low HP, he had to run away. Point. Yep, but the B point is right now contested back, so this is good. They have done the B point. No one is on it yet. It's very hard to cast, a lot of things are happening, guys. Oh, and, uh, this is so much going on, but they are capping again on the points for this. Yeah, so key highlight right now to make Nexus 5%. Only left. They really need to keep someone in defense. There is no one in the point right now. Oh my god, the units. Last second unit push from the Pike Militia. Out of all the units, Pike Militia stopping the capture here. Nice. They kill them, they clear them. They really need to keep someone on the point constantly. That's one thing. And another thing is they cannot lose three points. They need to have one point at least available to not lose the the well, Nexus team is right now doing a quite good job on that. Yeah, they're doing great. They got back A. Um, they, oh, but they're losing C again. But someone is going there. Someone is going to D as well. Yeah, so A point is cleared. Let's take a look uh, at the statistics because you have three lights only here as well. Yeah, true that. Let's see. Oh, this is so quick. Uh, let's see. So we got match in down on Aclarize actually. That's the MVP down. This is that might be major, right? Uh, we've seen Aclarize depend on him for so many games and he's out already. Um, might be intentional, who knows? Um, furthermore, uh, unit kills. Let's see. Well, it's pretty equal, pretty close as more kills are coming in. Belanda also down. The other MVP for Aclarize as we see that the point B is being kept by Nexus once more, but they're still at risk. They are still only at 5%. This game is so close, man. And B point is captured right now by, by Nexus. They did a very good push. Even though Eclarides team tried to defend, they were not able to come with their units fast enough. So this is what I said in the beginning before the match. A lot of ground to cover. Infantry is nice, but it's slow. That's the problem. And we can see B point. There is a lot of fight going on. And C is going to be almost captured. Look at that Nexus having B and A secured. They are trying to go with C and trying to do the triple cap. Almost got it, but yeah, Eclarides were able to spawn in the last second and they are going to clear them out. Another unit coming in, so they are definitely going to even ensure that the C point is not lost. And this is going to be a good thing. Only five minutes left. Thing to watch out as well, because it might be that the time will decide. Yeah, it might be. Uh, looks like Nexus is having a really strong foothold on the center right now. They also have the eight points secure. So Nexus is in a pretty good place right now. Um, if they can get the supply between B and C, they can also start pushing for C maybe. But of course they have to make sure that no one gets behind them because if someone gets in the camp and can cap it, then we know it's only 5%. Yeah, and right now on the stats screen you can see that a lot of teams, uh, a lot of people have died fully and have no more response. So this is, uh... Yeah, we just got one more from Nexus. Uh, so three people on Nexus side are down for good and two on the Acrorite side so far. We got two more on Acrorite that have two deaths and there is one, two, three, four, five guys on Nexus that have two deaths. So Nexus is slowly losing the the life battle for the heroes. We can see a nice arming exchange from the back. Good reaction from the stalwarts. Another arming it from behind. This time it's on Eclarides. So good cleanup, and I guess they will take B. So right now, Eclarides controlling C. No one from Nexus around to contest. They are getting B point. I guess they will definitely get it. I mean, there's Imperial fight, but there's much more units. Yeah, I would assume they will get it. 
Let's take Nexus, a look on A. Nexus is nicely, mainly at their base right now. Um, they are trying to hold A and their base, but they need more, right? They are behind, so they only have four minutes left. I, I wonder if they can still pull some. Yeah, we can see that there is A point being covered. That's a very good decision. They, if they lose three points, they are going to bleed out points. And yeah. Looking at the statistics, 700 units left for Eclarides, 670 for Nexus, very similar. The problem is here. You can see that there is one, two, three people from Nexus. Sorry, four people. Four, actually, there's four down right now. Yeah, who cannot spawn anymore. On the other end, on Eclarides, we have only two people. So this yeah, is an advantage. We can see it on the center, Eclarides is grouping. Seems like they are trying to group for a final push. And, 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 and they gotta know, right, that they have the advantage. They, they only need to wait out and hold one objective, and they are fine. Yeah, so Eclarides having the upper hand with the timer, with the points, seems like this is slowly leaning towards their end. And next, they are trying to defend the main point. That's a good that you don't lose it. It's 5% only. If you lose it, it's gone pretty much for a month, like immediately. So this is this is good thing that they are keeping people in defense. But is this good tactic? Maybe you need to risk some more. This will not no. bring you anything. Two minutes Echo left. Acrorise is moving to A as well, but I see Nexus going to B. Maybe? No, not yet. So Acrorise is moving to A. They have more people there. They might take it and actually finish the game themselves. Mm -hmm. So B point is fully covered by Acrorise. C point, we can see two, po two people from Nexus advantage. trying to flank, but Acrorise is responding and the main fight will decide right now here what will happen. We can see good rotation from Eclarides. They read very well what is happening and they reacted even better. Right now, three people left only here from Nexus and I don't see too many units. So this might be the nail to the coffin, not capturing this point. Yeah, we see Nexus making a des desperate attempt for the B point. They're pushing with three on two there. Uh, so they might get it back, but it might not be time at all. Um, at C point, I see units going there. Oh, they're capturing C. They, might yep. be just they have triple cap, and this is over. Three, what two, said? one. Bob. Well done. Extra rights. Surprising win for me. So well done by that. Very well played. Very well played. I mean, first of all, sorry guys for casting this. It's first time like that. With the weather, it was hardcore. But I hope, yeah, I hope it was good, good enough. <laughs> So let's move to the statistics right now for Just the MVPs. After our look what he has done to Nexus. Yeah. Here um, ah, yeah. Avatar, yeah. As you mentioned, yeah, the, the MVP from previous games, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't know why, but he performed, outperformed any person on his team, I think. Um, surprisingly, Matt Shin going down, only 32 unit kills, three, three hero deaths, and, and he was out. Um, same, for, same for Kiwi Choco, soon in the game, pretty early in the game, I mean. Um, we saw both of them perform really well, but Actorize still were able to win it, even without two of their better players. Um, on Nexus side, we can see so many heroes with three deaths, right? At the end, of course, they had to push it, but like we said during the game, we saw slowly that Nexus was losing more and more people. And yeah, after a while, the map is just too big and you cannot maintain pressure on enough points. We saw in the beginning Nexus was pushing really hard, they were so close uh, to the base as well. But for some reason Acroids just did better than Nexus. And Nexus uh, in the end lost uh, Kronos AD, MVP for Nexus. He performed really well, uh, the only one with over 100 units in this game. So um, we got to look later on what he did with his units because uh, there might be some units that he's really, re really comfortable with. It's so surprising for me, this game. I didn't expect Nexus to take it. To yeah. lose it, actually. And yeah, mm -hmm. take it. to take it. Yeah, I mean, you are the stat guy, so you know the best. I guess the uh, numbers don't always work toward the, the predictions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then looking at the performance for the three games in the, in the total, to be honest, those two teams seems like they are on a very similar level but then in different aspects right we, we we have seen some very interesting tactics coming here and there and and uh, some bit better than others but then also we have seen some nice unit placement movement together some flanking maneuvers you know so thinking outside of the box some planning mm. some quick reactions 
many different things we have seen observed today and both teams have been either better or worse in each one of them i cannot list you out all of them right now but sure. but definitely as said different aspects but very balanced games in my opinion mm -hmm. yeah totally um maybe it also showed in the end that uh, nexus hasn't had any uh, tournament experience right in that final game you need um, yeah really good communication especially for field battle i think so let's hope that they can show up uh, even better right in the next uh, quarterfinals that they will be in uh, same for for actor rights as well um uh, we saw great improvements for both teams i mean we've seen actor rights before like we mentioned so many times already and they showed that they can uh, protect their flanks they showed that they can flank other teams as well and nexus just absolutely stomped that second game they played so well so convincingly um, so they have shown that they are able to take wins and finish the games in really good fashion yep so Aclarid is taking the first seat in the tournament from group a nexus advancing as well to the quarterfinals on the second seat they will face um, group d in the quarterfinals so we will have to wait a few Sundays to, to see who will they face against. Um, all of this information, all of the details on the tournament and whatnot, guys, you can check all of this information on the official tournament Discord. And uh, by writing exclamation mark help, you will get the, the, the access to, to the, the stuff over there. So uh, don't hesitate. There is still five more Sundays of stuff that is coming. I mean, games and, and a lot of emotions and, and uh, statistics, uh, replays, and many, many interesting things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be so fun. This first day was great. We had a bit of a hiccup at the, at the start, but the games delivered. Uh, absolutely. I, I look forward to the following weeks. Um, do we want to take a look at the schedule that's uh, ahead of us as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's uh, take a uh, look. Uh, the upcoming weeks are very exciting. A short look back. So today, Group A, 18th, right? We played we played a few matches here and there. So you, you were able to, to see a lot of action. But yeah, Group B coming in next Sunday. After that, Group C on 2nd of May. Group D on 9th, 9th of May. And then after that, we advance to quarterfinals. So basically eight teams. Top two teams of each group advance to the quarterfinals. And uh, as there are four groups, we will see, yeah. We will see eight, eight teams advancing. And then after quarterfinals, last day of the tournament, 23rd of May, we will see semi-final two matches, right? Best of three, of course. Then game for third place and then finals, right? So a lot of actions are coming in. Yeah, absolutely. And now, uh, once again, Actorize is going out of Group A as the winner. So, and uh, Nexus is going out as the second seed, uh, which means that Actorize will play on the bottom bracket or top brackets. They will play the second in Group D. So, they will know in three weeks who their opponent is going to be. Nexus will play as the second seed of Group A. In against the first place team of Group D, so they too will know in three weeks' time what team they will have to face in the quarterfinal. Yeah, definitely. Um, I see a lot of uh, chat uh, coming in. I cannot keep with all of you guys' comments. Sorry for that, but uh, yeah, one team cancelled. Unfortunately, the, the arrogant Ravens had some hardware issues and and uh, some someone PC died and then a few people didn't show up. So. They had organization problems and unfortunately they decided to give up on the tournament. But uh, don't don't worry, we still have uh, uh, 11 teams in the tournament. I mean, they were elimin eliminated today. Two of the teams advanced to the quarterfinals. And we have three more groups, as you can see, three teams each, right? So next Sunday, we'll have Lamaland, Eden and Team Kitten facing each other. So a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting games over there. Maybe you want to give a sneak peek, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, next week, I'm looking forward to Eden. 
Uh, I gotta be honest with you, they might be one of the tournament favorites. They've been in, uh, playing in a few tournaments already, and they looked amazing. Um, they are quick, they flank well, they push from different sides, and they have really, really good players. Um, so definitely the team to look out for in that group, I think. Um, but also Team Kitten and the Lamaland, um, they are great teams as well, right? I mean, we don't have any bad teams, I would say. We have really good teams and good teams. Um, but we know most about uh, Eden for now. Um, we haven't seen Lamaland and Kittens at any tournament, so it's going to be new for them. So they might be rocky at the first few games, but uh, let's hope that they improve or maybe they surprise us and start out really well. Uh, but for Eden, um, yeah, definitely the, the most hyped team in this group, for sure. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I cannot wait. We already seen some of the, the teams, as you mentioned, right, playing in the early tournament one. I have I, I had the opportunity to cast some of their games as well. So yeah. definitely interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, we shall see. We shall see what, what it will bring to us. Yeah, as you can see, my dog just woke up. Yeah, from, the, from the sleep. The, fortunately enough, he was not bugging me during the, the games. That's a good thing. And right now we are waiting for a final confirmation on the on one more thing because maybe we will have some additional present for you guys. Let's say some special thing. Uh, we are we are trying to talk through the remaining waiting time. Will do. Will do. Um, I didn't manage to get any clips of this battle, as you can imagine, it was so chaotic. Uh, so unfortunately we can't show any clips, if any of you were, were wondering. Um, we did also record my second screen, so maybe next week we can show you some of the highlights of the field battle. Look at that. And we can also, yeah, just maybe about the field battle, General. You know, what did you notice was working in the end for, for, for teams? Uh, yeah, the, the lobby is open, by the way, CB, so, so pop in. Uh, for the field battle, I mean, uh, when we discussed how to uh, tackle the tiebreakers, right? How to um, how to do them, uh, how to, you know, resolve the, the ties, uh, we came up with this conclusion of, of, of this map, and I was like, yeah, great, you know, equal map, mirrored map, equal opportunities for these both teams, great. Mm -hmm. I've never in my life expected to see so much action and teams taking it so seriously, really preparing a lot of, uh, you know, preparing a lot of tactics, a lot of uh, uh, unstandard ways of tackling, uh, tackling this point or that point, moving around and so on and so forth. So, yeah, uh, like... <laughs> Seeing just this one tiebreaker, I like. I'm, I'm silently hoping that there will be more in the next groups. Yeah, totally. Let's hope for a three-way tie somewhere in a group. That's going to be so exciting. Um, if it does happen, we might have to figure out a way to split our screen, right? So we have uh, A and C point at the same time showing uh, because th there's so much going on. Uh, I was surprised as well. Um, and yeah, you could see the map is so big, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's that really impacts the game so so yeah, in, in such a great manner because you could see both teams were attacking each other's final camp at the start, right? Pretty quickly in the in, in the battle, and then once one side bleeds out and they die, they come back on their own side and they can assist the defense, and it creates an interesting dynamic. And then it's about who gets back on the map, map the, the the quickest, who gets back to the B point, can capture. Right, the, the points that are out on the map, and uh, you could see how how fast you have to be. It's, it's so much about speed. So I'm also wondering, uh, right, like what units will will we see played in other field battles if we see them? Um, because on this map, maybe it's better to bring Kev, right? Maybe it is just about getting out there, be be quicker than your opponent, instead of having the the stronger or better units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so I hope that we will see at least at least one more tiebreaker. This map is, is quite hardcore. Okay, I see a question on the chat. Uh, Varak asking if there is a spot for new team. Unfortunately, no. Registra registration is closed. Uh, we plan to have a bit more teams and then we would organize it a little bit differently. But uh, seems like uh, you are a little bit late. 
Um, fear not. I imagine with so much support and so much attention, there will be uh, added tournament free, maybe. And uh, yeah, over there, definitely, the, the, it will be open registration. Another question What team are, am, am I waiting for the most? I mean, personally, I don't have any. And the team that I'm looking out the most towards to. Uh, the only thing which which triggers me uh, like these emotions is uh, my server, right? So I play in EU2, and uh, yeah, the EU2 teams I know. Uh, most of them I play with them, against them on sieges, on territory war, and so on. So seeing EU2 team gives me or brings me this this additional you know connection or whatnot. And, uh, yeah. And CB, how about you? Out of yeah. all the 12 teams, do you have yeah. any team you're waiting for? So I was absolutely looking for Nexus today, right? Um, they impressed me in one game, I, I really love that. Um, I hope to see more from them, uh, totally, because uh, like you said, they're from EU1, we only have one EU1 as well. Um, so I love that, but I also like um, Podcard. Um, they love to play Kev so much. Um, they sally out quite often, or they even defend cities with just Kev and just giving up the wall for free. Um, I just love that. It's something that we do with our house as well so often in Siege Battles, with the frustration of many maybe. Um, but it's such a fun playstyle sometimes, you don't want to see it every game, but um, definitely exciting to, to look at and see how teams adapt to a team that has such a specific flavor to them playing or rely on Kev so much. And we've okay. seen them in the third week, I think, right? It's... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Pondgaard in Group C versus N Gegner and Russian Village Boys. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Song Surfer, why is CB co streaming with you? Uh, why not? I mean, it's, uh, I guess uh, having Co-caster is definitely 10 steps higher, right, from the previous RE tournament. I mean, I will be uploading the uh, the recording from, from today, right, to the YouTube, so you can watch, of course, in the History channel. On the on the channel, you have the, the uh, RE tournament one. You can watch there, right, how it went. And just comparing the quality of, of everything to today is, like, 10 times better, in my opinion. So. So that's why, right? So, for your pleasure, for your viewing pleasure, that's why it be easy. Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's great to be here, right? Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, most people don't know me, of course. Uh, like I said, I only started season four, um, playing with a small house. Uh, I'm, I'm not streaming anything currently. I'm not sure if I will, but yeah, I hope this, uh, this stream has delivered for you, and I hope uh, everybody enjoyed the games. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm posting the. Someone asked about the tournament's link uh, bracket. I'm posting it up. Uh, but remember, exclamation mark help. You can check everything over there. And right now we have three more things that are going to happen today. So we have uh, actually one of the guys from the Nexus waiting for the interview. So we'll have one interview. Then we will have a death match, just for fun. And at the end, we'll have another interview with uh, Claridis team. So that's left in the in the schedule. So let me invite other casters here, and we can talk a little bit. Okay. So hello to the caster team. Hello. So we can talk a little bit at the end, I guess. But for now, let's move in shortly from the next. Yeah, sure, let's go down. Sure. Hi, Shorty. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. And you? Good. Ah, well, good as well, I guess. So, welcome. Congratulations on your amazing games. Of course, Shorty representing the next team, if you are not aware. Uh, yeah. I would like to highlight and congratulate you for the, the game you have won on the, on, the, on the second game, right? This was like... I think the fastest one of the fastest game I've seen in my life. Yeah, we are we are we are pretty strong in attacking. We all I think I can speak for all of us. We hate defending. In attack, <laughs> this, our souls are working for for attacking. Definitely. Okay. Uh, and game was insane. Yeah, 
quite quite good team play. Uh, but the def defense was was really re really really good. But yeah, we had a bit of the advantage of blocking them from the supply. It was nice. Okay, so could you tell me a little bit more about uh, you coming into the tournament? Like, uh, did you train specifically for the maps? And what we have seen today was a uh, more of a uh, hot. Uh, thinking of your uh, shot color and you know adjusting or did you have something like that planned oh the planning was uh, uh if i'm real uh, uh planning was disgusting we we made nothing it uh we just went in we had really problems with the ids and everything we had one training with seven or eight people's running but it was quite funny and uh, yeah, I think ne next week we make a lot more trainings and I think we start seeing that a bit more competitive for the future. Yeah, so of course uh, still taking second place gives you an uh, advance to the quarterfinals. So we will, we, we will meet there in a couple of weeks. So you have some time to prepare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. So we absolutely, absolutely loved your second game, right? Um, what did you think of Eclorite as your opponent in the second game? Uh, how do you feel they, they performed there? Oh, uh, pretty strong. The the thing is about this map. Uh, it's uh, if you don't get B so fast, just just try to push on the right or mid. Uh, the most time, it's it's pretty decent to working to just block them from the supply or something. And uh, if you have the advantage and nobody's on the endpoint, just run for it. The same if you get A, just try to insta get C. And mm. yeah, I think, yeah, uh, we didn't plan this in this so, so far, but yeah, it was a quite nice idea. We had shot before the, we saw the supply was hard defended. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And something we noticed was uh, you played a lot of CAF on the defense and then on the on the attack you, you brought in a lot of CAF at the end as well. Um, uh, the army was, of course, this time. Uh, we felt like maybe at the, at the first uh, defense you were playing uh, maybe a bit too many CAF or too many at once. W what do you think about it? Yeah, that's true. We played a bit too much CAF. We, uh, from the unit planning, we were a bit not so good. But in the second game then we planned it a bit better. And yeah, CAF is, is not so good in the actual meta. Uh, but yeah, it's quite decent for flanking and some, some, some stuff. And yeah, for the next, for the next games, we, we will be better prepared for this and don't have too much CAF, hopefully. Okay, thank you. And for the last question from the English casters, uh, I wanted to ask is um, cons considering the organization of the tournament, so the the map, uh, you know, being randomly chosen and the tiebreaker with this map. Uh, do you feel like it's, it's it's working fine for you? Do you like it? Uh, yeah, the random map is, is quite okay for us. Uh, um, the, the map today was not our fun, favorite map, but quite okay. Uh, uh, we, we like the organization and uh, yeah, tiebreaker. Yeah, uh, it, it was quite hard and uh, it's it's quite okay. We we like it, and Thomas is really fun. We had a lot of fun today. Cool. Okay. Do we have any time, other yeah. questions from other casters? No, I, I just want to say that that second game that you guys did that was the fastest game I ever saw in a tournament in my life. Wait for the ever. future. Wait for the future. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, That's perfect. That's nice. Perfect. Yeah, okay, congratulations, man. congratulations then for advancing towards the, the quarterfinals. See you in a few weeks, and uh, yeah, good luck in the future games. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, we mute, hope for one minute, and then come back. Uh, Ari? Yes. We, we do that match first, and then. Uh, no, no, we don't do. But um, ah, okay. we, 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 we talk about that with Hamcrow when okay. he joins in. She's on there. Yeah, yeah, she's on there. Um, just one minute. Uh, yeah, okay, guys. So we will be doing the interview with the winners, with the Clarides team in a moment as well, a short one. If you have any questions you really want to know from the chat, feel free. If we will not use it right now, maybe, maybe they will be asked in the further stages because a clarity this team of course also advances forward. So
if you want to know something about the Claridis, the first place winner from the group A today, give some questions. All right, yeah, interesting stuff today. Definitely a lot of interesting matches. Some things that I have not expe expected to ever see <laughs> in the tournament. So, so really need to rewatch a lot of the the things that happened today. So, uh, yeah. I will be I will be re-uploading the the whole tournament um, uh, day by day. So, if you are not yet on the Ari tournament Discord, please join in. Uh, there is a history channel where we keep all the track of all the the previous streams and so on, so you can join there. So I would be good to go. Okay, so we are ready for the second interview. Mm -hmm. Let me call in the. Cool, I'm ready. Okay. Somewhere to unmute, then we can move down. The Claridis team, welcome, welcome, guys. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. We are live, yeah. so first of all, I wanted to start with congratulations, right? I mean, the group A. Very strange day with the with uh, a lot of you know uh, time problems and whatnot at the beginning, but at the end we we get to see a lot of great games and thanks to you they were better than expected. So the first wow. question I would have to you is in, in general, uh, how did you enjoy the the day today? Uh, actually, it was a. Uh... Really good. We 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 enjoyed it uh, really well. Like it's a, it was a really fun moment. Um, so thank you for organizing that. Plus, uh, we got to face a team which was pretty good, like really good at the game. So really overall a really good day. Okay. And yeah. sorry, I forgot to mention we have of course Arkanop and Hamcro. Oh hey. Hello. <laughs> okay, CB. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've seen you in a few tournaments before, right? And uh, we saw that you struggled at the beginning of, uh, of the matches getting used to the tournament scene. But you seem to kind of find a groove slowly. Uh, what made it possible for you to win today? Uh, well, yeah, it's it's true that uh, and that we did struggle a lot uh, at the beginning of tournament to find uh, our pace in the rhythm of how games are going. Like games in tournament are really going faster than what the uh, than the the usual pace of TWNO. Uh, and you could see like during our uh, defense that we're still having a hard time with that. Uh, of course, it's also because given the number of maps and all, we didn't really work that much on the strategy and it pretty much showed as we got uh, smashed when they attacked us. But um, yeah. We're slowly tr f figuring out uh, our game and how we want to address uh, matches. And also because uh, there is a small difference uh, between uh, the first tournament that we did, which was a tournament last season, uh, is it's that we actually uh, recruited uh, one uh, really strong guy from EU1. And he, uh, at the beginning, he helped us. When we started the game, he gave us a lot of tips and uh, kind of taught us a lot of good ways of, to play the game and basically now he's back and he's allowing us to really be better and more structured during tournament mm. so um, just uh, from my side when i remember the first ari tournament you had um yes struggles with the teams you faced i would say yeah. in that way but i see that you stepped up your whole game it was a very nice attack like even when you had this uh, like four or five, three to four minutes standing just at the B spot, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, for us it looks like it looked like so. What are they trying to do now? Like do they yeah. know what they're trying yeah, to do? Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, what was your plan? It was uh, getting a uh, uh, new munition for uh, Namcan mostly, and uh, <laughs> kind of switching. Like you, you saw, we started with uh, three berserker because we thought that we might have to fight our way into uh, the the B point more than we had. And so basically, uh, after on the C point, the Berserker are not going to be that useful, especially because we noticed that they had a lot of calves. And so we sent back all our players, okay, get your ammunition and nam cans and uh, switch your uh, Berserker on uh, Forte Braccio. But eventually the push on C didn't end uh, so good. Yeah, very well. All right. So that no, is... You're underestimating yourself. You did a really good job, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, it was very I really good. appreciate that. Very good to watch. Yes. Especially the last game. The last game were like so tight. There was such a third I fight. Am. Oh man, you should have heard the the Discord. Like it was a, <laughs> a big mess. <laughs> yeah, a bit messy. That that's the best way to describe it. A bit messy. Very very fast paced. Okay, we have one more question, and I believe this will be the last one from my end from the viewer. Um, the question is: Why are you using Namcans so heavily? Well, um, it's actually maybe a consequences of the first Ari tournament. We didn't use at all Namcans at that tournament, and we got. Uh, pretty much shred to pieces by them, and uh, since then we started to using them to use them more. Plus uh, the E1 player, which is a uh, Lagatha, by the way, and uh, Adriano with us, uh, is also a big fan of Namcan, and so slowly we are integrating them more into our plays. And I don't know, it's just working. So why should we stop? Cool. Okay, so um, one thing from my side, um, you are in the lobby split up right now, like six versus six. Yeah. Um, three ground duel. I would say, after you leave this lobby, we'll wait one minute roundabout, and then we would start into the deathmatch, just okay. for fun, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, and um, thanks for the interview, guys. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very uh, much for the tournament. Mainly. Yeah, we're doing the tournament because we we want to take experience and all in this fight, and also because I don't know, we are oh, you not entertained. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I mean, it definitely showed with the experience you talked about from the previous tournament. You really, really improved a lot, and then also the the rooster sh changes you you mentioned. Uh, yeah. Of course, targeted mainly to perform better in this tournament. Uh, why else, right? <laughs> where yeah. where uh, all combined together, uh, allowing you to advance from the first seed. So congratulations. Good luck in your quarterfinal games. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank have you a very really much. nice uh, day, and let's hope onto the the funny death match. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. 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 <laughs>
Let's see. And CB, maybe you want to take the main commentator now. Yeah, we'll see if that works. <laughs> okay. You so. circle around the bell. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're seeing, yeah, like you said, many have. Ooh. So the right side with uh, Balanda and Elite, I think. Uh, and on the left side, we got Matchin. I think those are there to, uh, uh, like, team leaders, right, Kaina? They are the best performers in both in the teams, but a lot of short for small and musket. Musket is a damage dealer. And on the other side, match in on his glaive and two short bows as well with a musket. Um, so the match in team is definitely outranging the other team, but with so many short forts, you gotta wonder if you can uh, get through those, right? Yeah, I mean, sh short bows have very hard time hitting the heavy armor, and uh, short bows is the heaviest of them all, so this might be a very problematic thing. But they can keep up constant damage, and this is what they are doing constantly shooting. Absolutely, with the short sword rushing in, uh, they're trying to CC as m many as they can, but match in counter attacking. Uh, black bomb grenade from the musket, kill, taking them back, but the red team is advancing forward. Let's see if the moles can grab someone. Yeah, there we go. There's one mole grab, but it's only to push them further away as we get the first kill for the blue, for the red team. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so far we can see that the red team is very aggressively is coming into the spawn. And this is paying off for them as they have more kills. This is equal right now, and as you can see, the fight is happening still. Oh my god, double shot, but oof. I'm gonna have a hard time, boy. Yeah, they're grouping up meanwhile. I'm actually getting the kill there. Let's see them all spinning around. Ooh. Yeah, we can see it. the glaive is also so good because you can see, see, see so many people at the same time as we see that they're rounding up those sh short forts. And let's see if the blue team can now go to the red, uh, red team's base and killing them there. And uh, let's see if we also get any chests pretty soon. I don't know if chests are enabled, are they? No, I believe in the tournament rules they are not. And it might be right. the first time we are casting the death match, so we are not sure, but yeah, seems like they are not. Okay, seems like the red team have taken down a little bit of a breeder because they have four kills less, right? So they need to regroup, rethink their strategy, and that's what they did. And they are pushing right now. Look at that. Ultimate after ultimate after ultimate. Very well staggered, not allowing the blue team to do any movement here. Pushing very heavily in the back to cover the the damage dealers and keep non-stop you know, on them, not allowing them to deal the damage. This Ooh, is paying off. Is leader on the on Mortier and Aftar, they're down. Two else. Ooh. Yeah, and nice. this, this paid off. It's 6-6, six, six, right? They were four behind, they equalized. The red team is getting back again. Yeah, we see the short bow getting called out. And hard to get back from that, and he's down. And there we go. The musket in the back. Look, oh, he was around the corner. Big grenade there. Let's see if he can follow up there. But the red team is winning this one, and the blue team has to regroup once more. Yeah, that is a very good last one minute from red team. They equalized and they they gone over even, right? Nine versus six kills. So this is very good advantage. Unfortunately, there is a one pe person who was caught. And this yeah, is now it's Kiwi Choco. And now it's seven versus six. And let's see what's going on. The short force from the red team pushing forward, trying to get on the back line as the blue team is going to kill the musket. But the musket is so quick and nimble. Look at that. I was walking around the battle. And there we go. Oh, this is so much to follow. Yeah, a lot of action is happening and uh, definitely much more player focused than standard siege, right? So maybe let's try to use the following camera. We can see that Cyan is gonna die here in a second. Or will he? No, he won't. Look at that. That sneaky man. Sneaky musket. Survived a few seconds more, but not enough. Yeah, Red team. Yeah. Repting very heavily damage, they're healing up right now. But some people are also on the front line fighting. And the red team is getting ahead, they seem to be grouping a little better. Oh, that's a great short for ult. Resetting the attack, and there's a few low members on the blue team, so the red team might be able to catch those out. And look at that, just one short short, holding back five guys. Yeah, for a very long time it is as well. Seems like the teams have taken a little bit different approach right now. As you can see, red team, most of the team is fighting. One or two people at the back are healing, right? So they are 
staggering their heals, they are basically doing it one by one by one and constantly keeping a pressure on the blue team, not allowing them to kill at all. Someone is healing? Yeah, good luck, you have a short one on your head a moment later. Totally. And uh, opposite to what we saw on the matches, Machin is inting this little bit. He's already gone down four times. Quite different from what we are used to him. Yeah, we can open up the stats. You can see here on the left and right side, Sion six kills. I mean, Musket player, right? The, the damage dealer of the team is doing the, what he's supposed to do. And then, of course, the assists are here. You see Astarox, 14 assists. He was available there for almost all kills. One he made himself, so he was not... He was there not only one for uh, one kill, he was not there, so that's a very good performance from Astarok. And teams are right now again regrouping, rethinking the strategy, talking a little bit what to do now, and they are moving in. That is happening, it's very hard to track all of this, so at least I'm going to try to trust statically stay. Very nice ultimate from Blade, putting down two players. We can see again red team all of them are very low but they make the advantage early on and they continue the pressure non-stop not allowing anyone from blue team to kill i mean yeah red team we are at your spawn what you gonna do right you have nowhere to go that's their tactic and it seems to be working because they have seven kills ahead and xayon with the musket he is dancing around these fights so well he's just continually dishing out the damage taking all the kills while all the others set it up for him yeah, and red team healing up, right? This is this is very good play from them. They're healing up right now and getting ready for the next battle and then they collapse all at once. You can see Hamper very nice coming from back on the musket and short sword, keeping them busy, Choco as well helping there. Astarov chasing another short sword, short bow, not allowing any damage to deal. And we see Vice bears of pink on the other end. Saiyan being the, ma the main damage dealer is being chased by three players here. Two short for one mouth and they kill him. He goes down but he was having four or five guys on his neck for like almost the whole minute. He's yep. been dancing around so much but the blue team is finally getting back some kills but looks like the red team is still on the, the advantage. Yeah especially in this situation we see five players of red team versus three left on the blue team. They are running away, they are heavy armor, so there is high chance of running away or maybe even killing someone. Look at that, the one shot for this very low HP here. On the other end, we can oh, see... Oh, oh, oh we get away. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very close, very close. Okay, let's see. The MVP maybe. For now, Xion, let's see how he performs, what his movement is. He's shooting constantly, dealing damage. And then look how close he is, right? That's how you should play musket. Get close to the front line. And then you have your rollback skill if things get too. The flank was there from the Mao, but he got nicely out. And look at the blue musket and the blue short bow. They are getting flanked by the short fort. They were shooting on the side. And now they are really easy targets for the red team. Yep. Very good constant pressure from the red team the damage dealers. We can see Avatar here, he's out trying to do his job, being the main damage dealer for the blue team, but there is constantly someone on his face. Very hard to do. You are being pressured constantly and he just died. So we have seen very good fight. Right now, two kills left for the red team to make to win this. I think they will have it. Jiras, will he die or will he be able to escape? So much help, yeah, he's dead, that's what I thought. And then uh, only one kill left. Let's see what they will do. Healing, they, they, they want to make this juicy, no doubt. Yeah, will they chase someone, like uh, grab someone and fly him over the, the game, so troll good. someone or no, they will play normally, yeah? Oh, well, maybe. They're still not getting it, they're looking for it. Yeah, they are trying to find a peak. We can see a very... Uh, a switch of tactic, right? The backline yeah. is right now being defended by the Glaive player. But looks still. like they looks like they've chosen a short bow uh, for this time. Adriana is going to be the victim, and yep. there we go. Excited, the quarter kill. Very good game. I mean, yeah. definitely not as fast paced as the tiebreaker we had on the Emerald River, but uh, but yeah, nice to watch. So for the quick rundown of MVPs, we have Jiras. Or kills to deaths, and then on the other end, of course, Xion, main damage dealer, 13 kills, 11 assists, that's a lot.
very good play out of him if i calculate correctly he was there for 24 kills out of 30 right so like nice nice kill participation man pretty good pretty good okay let's switch then to the closure i guess for the tournament let me quickly go through the uh, yeah the schedule so guys thank you very much for for watching today i guess right uh, 18th april group a close we have aclarides taking the first spot we have the nexus team taking the second spot uh, a lot of action happening nice nice fights all around happy to to see that the two teams that performed very well out of this group are going to advance and we'll be able to see them later on in the tournaments in the quarterfinals can't wait for them further on of course right now on the screen you can see the further uh further games so group b next sunday same time half past one will be start of the stream and hopefully we'll be able to resolve all the technical issues that that were there in the beginning and we will start uh, the games at, at 2 p.m normally without any any problems that's there and then yeah cv so for quick uh quick summary what did the what what did you like the, the most about today one one thing i just love everything of it um but i absolutely love the games they were very back and forth so this this is what we want two teams battling out um and i also love the interview afterwards where we hear from uh the nexus team they don't love they don't like to defend at all and they will show us something more on the on the attack um so so nice to hear from teams like this um we don't hear it too often but yeah this was a pretty good day pretty good start i'm looking forward to the to the other weeks um just more action coming up love it yep all right uh, guys so in the meantime before next sunday we will keep you busy with the updates and so on so follow the um, official Ari Tournament Discord. We'll be posting the, the highlights over there, uh, which which we talked about. We'll be posting the recording of the game as well, right? So you can rewatch if you missed some of the some of the matches. I will cut down as well uh, during the week. Uh, I will cut down the games itself and post them to YouTube, so so you'll be able to watch just 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 the game only if you are interested in the the pure action. So a lot, a lot things are going to come in the meantime and then of course 25th of april we will see each other once more half past one we we'll basically yeah play group b playoffs and in the group b right we have as we talked a little bit in between the games uh, we will have um, llama land eden and kittens definitely interesting all right uh, glad to have you here can't wait for the next sunday thank you very much for help and for co-casting i mean it was it was great i guess a lot of great comments on the chat oh. yeah, I'm happy to be here. thank you for all the work you put in um i don't want to take away any credit here um uh, i'm just here as the co-caster as indeed and you guys did so much so much work on uh, organizing the tournament all the amazing things that you see, you guys see on the on the cast, it's all made by General Comfort and uh, Aridoshima. So sh shout out to you guys, absolutely fabulous. Cool, thanks, and of course, shout out to the all of the viewers here, right? Because uh, without you, nothing would make sense and nothing would be possible. So thank you very much. Yeah. So what's left for today is, uh, guys, uh, we will take a short technical break, like uh, three minutes of short technical break. And after the break, I will come back uh, on uh, myself uh, to just uh, dispense the prizes for the betting, right? As you know, the, the betting is, is, was live throughout this day, and it will be live uh, during every Sunday. So we will distribute the prizes in a moment. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, and see you in a moment.
Back with you. Badum. Yeah, okay, we are live. Let me switch to my camera here. Okay, everything is looking fine. So, uh, guys, yeah, a lot has happened during the tournament, right? But before the tournament, we had the betting present. So, let's see the responses. Let me show you the the site in the background. Yeah, you can see the site. Uh, so as you know, there will be a lot of uh, a lot of betting. Like every Sunday, there will be betting, right? Uh, I showed in the beginning what will be the prizes. If you write exclamation mark bet, you cannot enter anymore, but you can check what will be the prizes for the next weeks. So exclamation mark bet. You can you can check all the information there. What I'm saying right now is the amount of people who bet place their bets for today. So 13 people only, guys, come on. But then Nexus, 46 people predicted, 30 people on Eclarides, the 30% on Eclarides, and 23 on Arrogant Ravens. So I guess, guys, you were close, right? Between those two teams, you chosen you chosen mostly, right? So that's that's good. Okay, let's see for the for the responses themselves. We have uh, four people here who have provided the current uh, the correct responses. Uh, let me hide my camera for a moment to show you this. Uh, yep. Yeah. So these these are the people who provided the uh, correct uh, correct responses. So I'm gonna copy these sneaks over here them into the software I use for the lottery. Let's turn on the background music because yeah, the lottery will have a nice software, a nice music as well. 
Bam. Manually. Ah, only one copy. Why? Okay. Spam. Four people. Spent. Yeah. So we have four people in total who predicted correctly. Let's see who will win today. And uh, one more thing. Usually what I do is I just do the countdown as well. But for now I will just distribute the prize to the winner directly uh, due to the time constraints. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we had the, the issues at the start, so so some people might be uh, no, not there anymore. So let's see who will win today the double hero XP card. This music always get, gets me. Slimbos! Congratulations, Slimbos! Nice. In the meantime, you can tell us if you are here on chat, but uh, yeah, I will. Slimbo. Yeah, he is here. Okay, I will send him the uh, the message with the price. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, let's close with this screen. Thank you very much for joining uh, today, for all the support, all the comments, and so on. If you have not won in the betting tournament, in the betting competition, don't you worry. You still have a chance. There is five more Sundays. Every Sunday we will play. There will be betting to be executed. So definitely many more chances uh, to do so. So don't, don't worry about the games itself. As you can see, once more showing right next Sunday, Group B is going to play. So let's. Yeah, I, I mean I'm going to see you there hopefully one past one uh, half past one p.m. next Sunday. Rupee playoffs. Yeah, Corona combo tire. I don't have Corona, fortunately and unfortunately. Yeah, I have some health issues right now and I'm going... Uh, I have some a lot of uh, medical checks tomorrow, so hopefully we'll be able to see what's happening. But yeah, other than that, that's all from me, I guess, for today and from Mr. Dogo as well. Mr. Dogo, you want to say something to the camera? Buzi? Oh, Buzi, oh! Oh, yeah. He says from Mr. Dogo to you as well. And uh, goodbye. Let's see you guys next Sunday. Thank you very much. Good tournament. Good fights today. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye bye. of you like a wave returns to the sea into the blue may change but in a cycle that i can lose each painful but delightful to live through you came into my life just like another not for long, just a time Just like another season Maybe this time next year you'll reap me For no reason But I'll cherish every day Until you find my way this season Turn and change just like your mind Like the sun gives in to the moon Into the night